Yo! What is going on, Papa Fam? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy, Sunny, and I am back dropping you the most modern portfolio you've probably seen in a minute. It's gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. I can see the energy is nuts today. I'm excited for this one because you guys drive the energy in me. So this video today is gonna to be a big, big, big juicy portfolio. Tons of stuff which you didn't expect, trust me. So get ready, smash the like button. Let me know where you're watching from right now. I'm about to introduce you to our modern portfolio 2.0. Check this out guys, pow. Here we have the front screen. I'm gonna go ahead and demo everything because this deserves some serious loving right now, okay? So give me one second. I'm about to show you the animation. Are you ready for this animation? Wait for it, wait for it. Watch this, when the page loads, wait for this beautiful, look at this, look. What? In Tailwind CSS, that is happening. All of that is happening in Tailwind CSS. This comes up, we've got all this beautiful responsive design. We're gonna go ahead and have this lovely frame of motion. Look at that. As we scroll down, we're gonna go ahead and have our beautiful carousels pop in. This is actually snapping right now, so it's centering the elements on the screen. Bam, work up Fang, it's up to you. We've got the skill sets loading in, so check this out guys. You go ahead, hover over your proficiency, all that good stuff. It's all fully responsive as well. You can showcase all of your projects on your build. And most importantly, if I like who you are and I see your build and I think, wow, I wanna work with this guy, then boom, I contact you. Right now, I'm going to show you that this is a fully responsive build because you know we don't do half measures here. So, check this out. If we click the bottom, we go straight back to the top. You can see this whole thing is snapping. So, as I go ahead and scroll up, you can see it's actually snapping down into the build. This works in all different devices so, iPhones, tablets, whatever you're, the hell your employer wants to look at it from, it's going to work. So, we've made sure you impress your employer by not just listing out stuff, by showing it with your, with your work. So you guys can see right here, look, even the tabs are working perfectly. Beautiful, but beautiful, beautiful uh, UI. So you guys can see even this is working really nice. Everything's great over here. Even these icons, guys, even that is dynamic, right? So I'll show you how this works, but depending on what URL you give us, it will go ahead and render out accordingly. So as you can see, this is all working. Fully, fully responsive, beautiful website. Like even this, even the background of this, like what? It's just so clean. We're using Tailwind CSS to achieve that. And you're gonna learn how to build something beautiful like this just as well. Now I wanna mention, this is not hard coded information right now. Yes, the UI, the U UX, all that good stuff. I'm going to teach you how to code, obviously. But the main thing that you need to understand is that today's build is actually going to be powered by Sanity backend. So check this out, guys. This entire backend is actually powered by our beautiful Sanity CMS backend. So look at this, guys, right now. You can see if we go into Sunny Sanger, you're actually going to go ahead and be able to update all of the information that you saw on the page. So not only is it going to be something that is going to be absolutely, I forgot to put my light on. There you go. Look at that glow All right <laughs> so not only are you going to be able to go ahead and upgrade uh, update your stuff once it's on there all the information you see on the page is going to go ahead and get rendered just like so so this right here software engineer is pulling from here and so forth you can see we've got all of our experience everything everything is coming through a cms so as you can see right here, if you wanna upgrade your experience or update it, you can go ahead, pull that information in. All your social icons are gonna come in as well. So as you can see, Facebook, all this, if you've got a special link, it'll come up as a link icon. For example, if you're interested, join the Papa Fam plug. We got loads of that good stuff here, guys. So you guys can see, you can go ahead and actually update anything, including the skills that are listed out here right now. And to top things off, your boy didn't do any half measures. This build is heavily, heavily using TypeScript. So you're gonna learn all about TypeScript in, trust me, in a very, very powerful way today. It's gonna to be a hell of a lot of fun, okay? So get ready, over 400 people across platforms watching today, it is gonna be one hell of a build. Smash the thumbs up button, already passing 300 likes in a second. That's what I'm talking about. Let me know where you're watching from right now. And without further ado, let's go ahead, break down the tech in today's build so we can go ahead and get the juicy stuff started. Right, so today we are building, wow, it's hot in here. Today, we are going ahead and building out 
this portfolio and i'm going to go ahead and draw on the screen right now you guys always ask me sonny what are you actually using to draw on the screen well it's something called screen brush and as you can see i can freeze i can put things on the screen but we're going to be obviously learning react js so in today's video you're going to be learning react js right now i'm doing an outline of the video so that way you know exactly what you're going to be learning and also just want to shout everyone out georgia in the house india in the house rwanda in the house uk in the house usa in the house this is sick everyone is tuning in from all around the world that's what i want to see smash 300 likes already the guys I, at this point the pop of our energy is too good like we are absolutely killing it right this is amazing stuff sweden kenya japan poland cali oh what's up america in the house this is awesome rainy wells alex thomas i see you dude papicha this is sick everyone around the world international now this is how we do it Right? So you're going to be learning about React JS, you're going to be learning about Next.js, and in most in particular, you're going to learn how to optimize it in a way that you can render pages extremely fast because we're going to build it on the server beforehand as static pages and then go ahead and release it. So that way, whenever a user comes to your website, pam, it's super, super fast and we're going to implement ISR. So that way, if you update anything on the back end, it will change on the front end. Uh, after an interval we're going to learn about tailwind css that's how you saw all that beautiful ui kind of all that magic happening behind the scenes we're also going to be doing sanity io so i'm going to show you sanity io and when you get to that stage do not forget the first first link in the description is sanity.io forward slash sunny as you can see, the guys set us up. I love those guys over there. Amazing, incredible team, always developing the best stuff. And you guys can see your boy has hooked you up with a Papa Fam special. So when we come to the point where we have to install Sanity, make sure you use Sanity init coupon Sunny 2022. And what that's going to give you is you're going to double the free plan. If you've done it correctly, once you log in, you should be able to see um boosted free or boosted plus inside okay so lots of cool stuff to come we're also going to be covering frame of motion on the channel today you guys have not seen this yet on my channel i've done it in my coaching calls inside of zero to full stack hero if you want to check it out link is in the description but we are going to cover all of these silky smooth animations that you see happening including this background this ain't just a library that i'm pulling in and just randomly you know plucking things in i'm actually doing this in an awesome awesome way right now and we're going to be using motion to do that right frame of motion so a lot of cool stuff that you've never seen before on this channel i'm always trying to push my sort of my levels so that way you guys can go ahead and benefit right so this is what you want to do once we get to that point okay and let me know right now do you guys actually like the ui so do you like the portfolio you're going to be proud to put that on your cv because I want to see this out there. I want to see this absolutely killing it. I want to see you guys destroying your interviews and all that good stuff. And remember, guys, as I said, if you want to join us, remember, we are just a community of developers. If you do get stuck, this is what we're here for. That's why we have the Papa Fam. That's why we have Zero to Full Stack Hero. Our heart and soul has gone into my course. But yeah, all of this stuff is free. If you just want to go ahead and take it to that next level, feel free, jump in. We've got an amazing community, amazing set of team and developers over there. And yeah, you guys are absolutely loving it inside the Papa Fam right now. So that's what we're going to be doing. So without further ado, I think we should, I think we should get started, guys. What do you guys say? I think we should get locked in, go ahead and code out today's portfolio. Just to let you know, we will be deploying this build with Vercel. I'm going to show you how to do it with the CLI today. You're going to be doing a bunch of full stack development. So we've even got the API side of things. So we're going to go ahead and create our own API endpoints. And we're also going to go ahead and use React Hooks form to manage the state inside of our form when we come to con uh, the Contact Me page. So tons of stuff, tons and tons of stuff is happening right now. Okay, guys. And wow, I see the retention flying. We have 400 people. You guys are getting me hyped up. Without further ado, let me have some water because well, I need it because you got the energy today is nuts. You guys surprise me every time, right? Nearly at 500 people watching right now. Wow, I'm sweating. My AC is blasting as well. All right, this is crazy. Wow, okay. Let's kick it. Let's absolutely crush this one. All right, I'm also going to show you how to do this cool little trick over here. All right, so you guys can see this. Look at that long hair right there. Old school sunny, right? <laughs> and these are also obviously clickable buttons, right? So if I click on about, it will take me to the about page and so forth. But let me know, I, I, you guys are loving the UI right now, okay? Bahan Khatib says, well, here we go from the master himself. Thank you guys. I'm only good at what I do because of you guys, the energy that you give me, the, the, the 
the giving back that's where i learn right so that's what we're going to be crushing it today okay so without further ado let's dive in guys so first thing i want you to do is focus okay so phones on do not disturb none of that bad you know none of that distraction stuff right now if you're watching the replay take your time we're gonna have timestamps here and i want you to obviously just have fun okay so don't worry if it seems hard seems difficult this is actually going to be beginner friendly and yes it may be a little bit kind of fast in some areas but don't worry take your time that's why it's here it's going to be up on the on youtube afterwards so it's all good okay so diving into things firstly you want to make sure you got node installed otherwise you can't do things like mpx right but we're going to go ahead and install our first project using the create next app template okay and we're going to be doing it with the typescript template and the reason why you might you might be wondering why isn't he using his tailwind template seem to have a bug right so i'm not actually going to be using that one so First thing we're going to do is we're going to copy this right here, create next app at latest. And I'm actually going to show you all of my processes because I like to do it that way, because that way when you're doing it yourself, you can go ahead and actually replicate the same things if you ever get stuck. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal right now. You guys can do the same code along with me and let me know if you're coding along as well. Okay. So I'm going to go into my documents right now. I like to put things in order, right? I'm a bit OCD like that. You guys can feel free to put it wherever the hell you want. All right. Savvy programmer says TypeScript is my girlfriend. I'm joking. I, I love that dude. Good shit. <laughs> All right. So at this point, MPX create next app latest dash dash TypeScript. And you want to go ahead and put in a title for your build. Okay. So in this case, we're going to say portfolio. Uh, watching from Dubai. Oh, nice. I'm going to say portfolio, YouTube. Um, I'm just going to say YouTube 2.0. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. And this is going to go ahead and build out a Next.js app for me and it's going to go ahead and do it with the correct dependencies so that way typescript is set up out of the get-go and you everyone i always get this question by the way while this is initializing everyone's always saying to me sunny why is your music playlist from all that good stuff all you have to do to get the music playlist in the description there's a newsletter just sign up to the newsletter first thing we do is automatically send you an email which has access to our playlist so feel free to do that links in the description and that way you can enjoy your coding okay so we're going to go into that directory right now so i'm going to say cd portfolio dash youtube dash 2.0 bam and then i'm going to go ahead and do code dot to go ahead and open this up inside of vs code okay so i'm going to close that terminal behind now i'm going to go ahead and full screen this now what i'm going to do is if that didn't work for you that code dot command i want you to open up vs code command shift p and i want you to type in install now mine says code insiders because it's actually going ahead and i'm using the beta version you on you won't be using the beta version most likely so yours will just say install code command and path then you can do the trick i just showed you okay it's a very good trick reason being that i like to use it is mainly because it actually allows you to go ahead and um uh, open up your workspace perfectly so that way you've got all the folders on your left and you've got your VS Code set up. It's a very sh good shortcut when you're coding quite a lot, making new things and that kind of stuff. Okay, guys, we're absolutely crushing it. Nearly at 400 likes already. Jay, this is not <laughs> focus mode right now. Okay, awesome stuff. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set things up. So, first thing I want you to do is pay attention to the pages. Now, inside of Next.js, all of our pages are managed inside of our pages folder. So, if I have a page called search.tsx, that will resemble forward slash search on my website. If I have a page called index.tsx, naturally that's the home page of that route. So in this case, forward slash uh, index.tsx would just be my home page. Okay, so that's where all the magic is going to happen. So opening this up to kickstart our app off, I'm going to close my other app that I had running and I'm going to show you how things are going to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and do command J. And I want you to go ahead and type in, and this first thing you need to check actually, is you need to go ahead and see if you've got a yarn lock or a package lock. It doesn't matter, you can switch, it's fine. But in this case, I have a yarn lock, so I'm gonna be doing yarn run dev. You can do NPM, it's fine. But if you do NPM, make sure you, you use one and you delete the other lock file. Welcome to the Papa Fam Special Tier Engineering with Kellyanne. Thank you for your support, dude. I appreciate you, brother. And now I can see you highlighted. If anyone else wants to join, the join button is down below. Okay, so this is done. Amazing stuff. Now what I'm going to do is put my setup to it nicely as I want it. So that way we can code in a cool way. I'm going to go ahead and throw this over to that side. And what I like to do, guys, is just optimize things a little bit. So that way it's not too, too messy. I'm going to throw this over there right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do localhost 3000, just like so. Now, as you should be able to see this, right? 
amazing stuff okay retention is absolutely nuts today thank you so much everyone for tuning in this is going to be one of the best builds because it's the most value to all of you viewers right now because you're going to have a new brand new shiny portfolio at the end of this right so first thing i want you to do is go ahead and remove a bunch of stuff right now probably what you want to do is keep the head and probably say something like sunny's portfolio okay whatever you want really you can call it whatever you want it's up to you and you can even change the icon as such i'm going to just remove this right now and we're not going to be using the classes like so we're actually going to be using our own stuff so i'm going to get rid of everything here right and we should have a clean slate. And all i want to do is h1 saying hey papa fam let's just say let's build an awesome portfolio and hit enter now you should see this let's build an awesome portfolio good stuff okay and by the far, I don't know why that's black, but anyway. So what we're going to now do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And the first step is we need to go ahead and set up Tailwind CSS. Okay, so Tailwind CSS is basically a way that we can go ahead and shorthand our steps of writing CSS. So it allows us to write really cool, responsive websites. And it's just an overall amazing library. It allows us to have all these utility classes that we write in line in our code. And it's much more readable, much more easy to work with. And trust me, it's just damn powerful. Okay, so Tailwind in CSS I'm going to show you guys right now you can go ahead head over to the website I would recommend if it's your first time using it go ahead and actually just what read out their web page and just see for yourself the power of Tailwind CSS okay and what we're going to go ahead and do is just get this started up so we're going to click on docs up at the top and it's not complicated okay we're just going to follow the, the steps right so I'm going to do it with you so that way we can kind of grow and do this together okay so npm install dash d I'm going to copy the ending because I'm using yarn right now I'm going to do this I'm going to go ahead and create a new terminal so notice in my first terminal i have things running and the second one i have this so i'm going to go ahead and pull this over right now and i'm going to say yarn add dash d tailwind css okay now while that's installing i can go ahead into the next step and then i can go ahead and do this mpx tailwind css init this is basically going to set things up for me so what i now need to do is type in mpx tailwind init tailwind css init Okay, let that do its thing. Now it's got, we've gone ahead and got a Tailwind config.js file. Okay, so with that config file, what I now want you to do is we need to go ahead and add in the following. But we're not going to do that because we have a slightly different configuration to the one that they have. All of our content actually resides in pages and components. Right, so right now we've got the pages. We will have a components folder as well. So what I want you to do here is I want you to drop this down and I want you to pop in the following. So pages any file inside any name and the extension should be javascript typescript javascript or typescript s and it's going to go ahead and read our tailwind utility classes from these files okay so that's going to go ahead and tell tailwind that it needs to go ahead and look in this area to go ahead and do what it needs to do okay nearly at 500 likes keep on going guys wow that is actually amazing thank you so much this is this is incredible today i can't stress enough right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to our globals styles right so we've got a globals.css file and what i want you to do is control command a delete everything and i want you to go ahead and copy in the following all right so we need this inside of our code then once you've done that what we're going to do is go down and you can see we've got this simple command right here now actually what i want you to do is there is actually oh sorry i'm getting confused with react native <laughs> so crazy all right so at this point what we can now do is we don't actually need to do the CLI build process. Um, now we can actually should be able to go ahead and use it. So if I go ahead and hit save, if I go into my code and I go here and I type in class name and type in something like text red 500. Let's go ahead and see if my text goes red. Hit refresh. OK, so we're not getting red text right now. Um, I probably missed a step because I kind of rushed this a little bit. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to lie. I did rush that a little bit. Um, Right, so add tailwind. Right, give me two seconds. A little quick debugging already. Right. Okay, I actually didn't use the right um, setup, so I should have done. Now that we've changed a bunch of stuff, I need to go ahead and do npm. Go back here, close this off, and yarn run dev. There we go. Okay. And let's see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna pull this to the side. Let's go ahead and have a look, get rid of that. <clears throat> and what we should be seeing right now, I'm probably missed something very quickly. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what we're gonna do. 
we're going to go ahead and have a look at this. There's actually an actual guide for this here, right? So if you type in install Tailwind CSS with Next.js, it will actually come up like, oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. I completely used the wrong one, right? You actually needed to use this one. I'm sorry, right? So use this right here, guides Next.js. So we're going to go ahead and just literally override our stuff with that. It's fine. It happens. It's good. We're live right now. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm using NPM. No, 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 no. Cut that. I'm going to use yarn add instead of install yarn add there we go okay see easy as right done we've got that post um there we go that's the one we needed All right now we've got content <clears throat> there we go everything here so boom let's go ahead and double check our tailwind config file everything's still good nice then we've got our global css which is exactly what we needed yep everything's looking good and then we can go ahead and check everything is working so we can hit refresh now and i'm probably going to go ahead and do that again so um tailwind already exists create a post to your CS file okay cool now i just need to check that mine is actually correct because i think i've actually screwed something up here tailwind config.js there we go uh, i'm actually going to go ahead and copy this and put mine in here without this plugin we're going to bring that in later okay Post CSS, there we go. And um, let's just go ahead and restart our server now. Okay. Hit refresh. Okay. Slightly frustrating, but it's fine. We'll get there. Let's have a look at the issue. Text red. Let's build an awesome portfolio. Adding it to hunt 10. The demo gods are against me right now. That's fine. It's all good. Tailwind, base, restart the server. I did do that. I don't think you need to inst import the um, the other thing. My bad. Uh, globals. Okay, there we go. Right, there it is. <laughs> right. It just, it took a second. It took a minute. I was thinking, I was like, what the hell is going on? Right, okay, there we go. There we are. Right, so now we've got it working. So it just takes a little bit of patience. Uh, it just had to kick in the preprocessor. So at this point, I want you to make sure that you've got the following installed, okay? Go ahead and type in Tailwind. And I want you to get the CSS IntelliSense over here. Right, so make sure you've got this. This is going to help you out because it's going to put a bunch of useful suggestions on the screen while you're working. Guys, 500 people are watching. What the hell? Thank you, dude. Right. This is nuts. Wow, 500 likes. Let's go. I just, it blows my mind. Okay, All right. So hit install on that and then let's carry on. So at this point now, you should be able to start in a super fast, nice way. If I was to go ahead and change the color of this case, I can do text blue and you see here i get all these nice little pop-ups so i can do like a shade of 800 bam we get blue text right awesome awesome stuff okay let's jump into some more juicy stuff that's actually pretty fun to do right so what i like to do if you haven't already we've already set up our tailwind css so that chapter is done jay i'm helping you out there um at this point now what we're going to do is go ahead and mark things out okay so what i like to do is i always drop comments around my page that way i know mentally what my next step in development is you can do it however you want this way tends to work well for me and honestly it really does help a lot of students out which is why i share the knowledge with you guys okay so i'm trying to share this with you guys so that way you guys can go ahead and benefit like so okay so at this point what i need you to do is we're going to go ahead and firstly we're going to build a header okay after we built the header we're going to go ahead and build a hero section after that we've got the about section then we've got an experiences section we're going to have a skills section following that and then we're going to have a project and contact me okay so projects and we're going to have a contact me section after that okay so these are all going to be built today so there's lots of stuff that we got to do today okay but it's going to be a hell of a learning experience for you guys and it's going to be one hell of a fun journey now i do have the build deployed over here so that way we can we can see this for reference and we can kind of mess around with it and so forth okay so we can use this as one of our reference builds um, and that way we can kind of go back and forth. I made sure we could do that so that way you weren't left in the dark as I was coding it. Okay, we can close these right now. We don't need them anymore and we can move our sanity somewhere else because we're going to come back to that in just a bit. Okay, so we need to get this to that. All right, doesn't seem like too hard, but we're doing pretty well. Smash the thumbs up and we're about to cross 500 likes. 
Okay, first thing I want you to do guys is we're gonna go ahead and build out the header. So the first thing is our folder structure. I like to keep things very neat, especially when we're coding big projects like this. So I like to click on package JSON, click on the folder and type in components. This is where we're gonna have all of our React reusable components. Uh, a lot of people asking, will you save this stream? Yes, I will. And guys, I'm not ignoring your text right now. You guys are saying loads of like, thank you messages. I thank you so much for tuning in, 500 likes. Bam. I can't believe it. You guys, love, your love is incredible. I'm going to keep the content coming. We've been doing weekly videos. That's how we do it. It takes a ton of work. So I massively appreciate you guys when you say that. Thank you so much. Right? There's so much work that goes into this. It's nuts. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead inside our components. We're going to type in header.tsx. That's because it's a TypeScript file, which has JavaScript, uh, JSX inside of it. Okay. Bam. We do this. Now, the next little trick that you may or may not know, depending on if you're a Papa Fam OG, is you want to type in React uh, extensions, right? Now, what I want you to do is grab this extension right here. This is called the ES7 React Redux React Native Snippets. I tell you, it's in every single video, right? Because honestly, it's a game changer of an extension. Now, here, what you can do is RFC e or there's even a typescript one right typescript rfce and you can go ahead and hit that and this will go ahead and create an outline for your file okay so in this case we've got a nice little outline and it will actually have the props and everything as so now as i mentioned before we are using typescript in today's build so get ready for some typescript work okay it's going to be a lot of fun Okay, so at this point, what we are now gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and render this on the screen. So I'm gonna say, I am a header, I am a header. Okay, hit save. And at this point, I need to pull this in. So I'm gonna say header, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and control space bar at the end. And we have this nice little neat trick to import things into our thing. Now you can see I am a header comes in and it says Sunny's portfolio based on this block of code right here. Okay, so with that said now, what we are gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and neaten up my second screen so that way I can actually see what the hell I'm doing. Okay, so let's do this. So what I, what I need you to do now is we need to go into our header and I'm actually first thing's gonna, first thing I'm gonna do is change up this. So we've got syntactically kind of more correct SEO friendly things inside of this, right? Yes, you can use T-S-R-A-F-C-E for a arrow function. You're right. So we're gonna change this to a header. So now it's actually a header component. So that way SEO search engines can find it a little bit easier, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is if we look at this screen, we've actually got this, we've got the top part, right? So this is broken down into a few different sections, right? We've got the top, Oh God damn it. Okay. I'm going to do that again. Pretend that didn't happen. We've got a bottom, <laughs> a top box, right? And the way I like to think of this is on this box, we have a few different sections. So here you can see on the left-hand side, we've got these icons right here. On the right-hand side, we've got this like sort of get in touch screen. Now, the main thing when you're a beginner, right? Or anything like that, right? You need to understand how Flexbox works, how that kind of stuff helps you position things and spread them across evenly, no matter what the screen size is. Thank you so much, Manoj. Oh, Jamie, that was you, dude. What is up, man? Thank you, Manoj, for the uh, donation. Thanks, brother. Because of your projects, I got a job. Jay, screenshot that. Amazing stuff. Geo still, I appreciate your donation. Thank you so much, dude. Oh, I've got it coming through the, the, the computer. Okay. So at this point, we're now going to go ahead and uh, yeah, develop that out, basically. So I'm, uh, for the top left, we're going to have a div, right? We're going to have a div uh, over here. So I'm going to have tier div. I'm actually going to have um, inside of my div, I'm going to have, let's just say social icons, right? So as I mentioned before, these are going to be the icons that we're going to see inside of our build. Okay. So in this case, we're going to have a bunch of different icons be rendered out on the screen. Now, these icons that you see, they're actually a component that we're going to be pulling in from a library. So they're called the React Social Icons Library. So I'm going to show you that right now. So React Social Icons, we'll just quickly Google search it throws us over to a GitHub page. Now this is a really awesome library. And the reason why is you pass in the URL, it will render the correct appropriate icon based on the URL you pass in. Then it can go ahead and you can customize it however you want. And yes, I wanna mention, if you are new to Flexbox, as I mentioned previously, check out Flexbox Froggy. I did a whole video on it. You guys can check it out. And thank you MarsWeb3 for saying JSON 2.0. I love that, that is jokes. All right, 600 likes coming in clutch. So at this point, what I need you to do is go ahead, head over to the NPM article and I'll show you how to install it. To be fair, I'm gonna show you anyway, oh, it's easy. Yeah, so here you've got it, I'm using yarn, so I ain't gonna do that. Command J, go into our second free terminal and I'm gonna type in yarn, add React Social Icons. I'm installing the dependency now, okay? So there we go, J and J Sean, there you go. All right, so in this case, we got it working, Command J to hide it. And I'm gonna go ahead and import that as needed. So I'm gonna pull in the social icon from 
the one that we need. There we go. Okay. Now in the beginning, I'm just going to hard code these values because I don't necessarily know, or I'm not pulling any data in from anywhere at the moment. So in this case, I'm going to use something like my YouTube channel to render the YouTube one and so forth. So if we need to render this on the screen, you can see we've got an example here of a, a social icon. So now if I was to go ahead and pull over to my screen, like so, and I hit save, you can see we've got a Twitter icon because we've loaded the, the following. Okay. Now here, what I'm going to show you how to do, I'm just going to make that a little small there we go let me know if that's too small or if that's, if that's okay all right nearly at 600 likes wow let's go guys well, i'm going to change this now to something like www.youtube.com forward slash sunny sanga yes i have that all right and you see bam look at that lovely right and what's so cool about this is that it's even clickable so if i click into this you will actually see that go into the correct uh you see my youtube channel pops up awesome stuff and we are live there we go Okay, so they we're actually going to use this in a very clever way shortly. Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to customize it. I want to make the foreground color, which is a property of it. I'm going to make that gray. I'm going to make the background color. So it's actually called BG color, BG color. I'm going to make this transparent, transparent like so. And as you can see, we start getting the look. Okay. Um, a lot of people saying, what is that pretty terminal X, uh, extension? I'm actually using oh my ZSH. Sasa says, this is the best way to spend Saturday. I feel you did. I feel you. Thank you for that. All right. To get this set up initially, Amoraj, thank you for the donation. He says, can you teach ML and data science projects too? I sure can with the help of my friend Leon. So I will plug him. Definitely check out Leon Clon's channel. All right. But there you go. There we go. We've got four icons popping up. Now, what I want to do is I want this div to style it out in the way that we need it. So I need it looking like that, right? So on this div, I'm going to go ahead and type in class name, and this is going to be a Flexbox container, okay? This is going to be a flex row container. I'm going to do this because I'm going to change up a bunch of things later. Items should be central, okay? Now, what I want to do as well is I need to make these eventually smaller. I don't know if I'm zoomed in here. No, we're good, yeah, okay? So there we go. So you see how that's on the top left right now, okay? The next thing I want to do is I'm going to have the contact me section and then we're going to go ahead and style it out and so forth, right? Or we'll even do motion at that point, frame of motion, okay? So I'm going to pop in the div and now what I want to do is I'm going to have a social icon for email. Now I've already done this one for us and I've actually added an extension where we've got a cursor pointer. So if I click save now, you can see my cursor is a pointer, which is nice. And this is actually going to be an email icon, okay? So I was just stupidly zoomed in for some reason. Okay, uh, ALS Journey says, can I watch this live later on because I have to go? Yes, you can, dude. It's going to be up on the channel afterwards. Do not worry, All right? And then next is I'm going to have a P tag. And this one is going to say, get in touch, okay? Feel free to customize the text. Whatever you want is up to you. Now here, I'm going to have class name and I want to have it uppercase. And on a small screen, I'm going to hide it. Now, what I want you to understand is on TL and CSS, everything that I write, all of the classes that I'm going to write are mobile first, which means that if I write a class such as hidden, you see on a mobile, that text is hidden. As I get bigger and I hit certain breakpoints, then we can say that other utility classes can come into effect. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and see this, right? Nearly 500 people are watching my life. Thank you. Wow, guys. I'm going to keep the content going okay this is incredible right so at this point we've got that right so in this case it's going to be hidden on mobile right that's what i want i want it to be hidden on mobile so i hit save it's gone right now how do i say after a certain break point i want the css to kind of come into play um so what we can do thank you manage because best youtube channel for javascript i've ever found thank you so much dude so on a medium screen we've got medium we've got small we've got extra large the way you say it is on a medium screen upwards i want to go ahead and have an inline flex Basically, I want it to show afterwards in a flex fashion, okay? Then I'm gonna say text should be small. I wanna have the text be gray of 400, okay? So a shade of 400, there we go. Now let's go ahead and see that. And as you can see, as it gets bigger, it goes ahead and comes in after a medium breakpoint. So that's a classified as a medium screen. There you go, right? Oh, look at this, he goes, love the info, go on the first time here, welcome to the Papa fan, my dude. Right, so in this case, looking pretty decent so far, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and also send to these icons, so that way the text is centered with it. So I'm gonna say flex, flex should be in a row. I'm gonna center the icons, um, so that way in case you add anything afterwards, it's gonna go ahead and consolidate it. Text 300, and I want it to be a cursor pointer over the overall thing. Okay, so now you can see over the overall div, I have a customer. Now the only problem here is they're stacked up because naturally two divs next to each other is an inline. Right, no, it, it, two divs next to each other is a block element, right? They're block element by style. Uh, their styling is block by default. Oh, right, my, my, everywhere today. 
Now, what I do want to do is I want it to stick to the top. You see that? It's got this nice kind of stick effect. So what you, I'm going to show you how to do now is make it sticky. So we say sticky, and then we can go ahead and say top zero. This means it will actually attach to the top. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say flex, and then I'm going to say items start, right? And as you can see now, we've all, oh no, sorry, I've actually messed that one up. Item start. Okay, now you can see flex puts everything in a row by default. The way that we go ahead and say, how do you position yourself between each other? is we say justify. And now I'm going to say put space between the two children. As I do it, it's going to calculate the exact space between the two children. Now you can see that looks ugly, right? That's way too big. Whereas in here, we've got some kind of max width constraint. So I'm going to show you how to implement a max width. So here, all you need to do is max width. And we're going to use the default 7XL. And you can see what it translates to by hovering over like so, right? So now if I go ahead and do it, you can see it's got a max width constraint, but it's not in the middle, right? Which is kind of annoying. So at this point, what we can do is we can say MX auto to uh, automatically apply margins on the left and right axes. And that will go ahead and center you out like so, okay? So really, really nice stuff. The next thing that we want to do is give this a Z value of 20 because it's going to be layered above all the other things. So Z value of 20, you can give it higher if you really want. It's completely up to you. Now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make it so that the items are start on items are starting on the mobile, but on a uh, medium or extra large screen and above, I want to center the items. So items should be centered like so. So now what you see is as we get smaller, let's go ahead and see how this works. Wait one second, move this. Okay, so there we go. And bam. The only problem is we haven't got any padding, right? So padding is the final little piece there. Um, so here I need to go ahead and say padding of five. And the reason why I did this, guys, is because previously I had a different design. But I'm going to leave it in there so you guys can feel free to mess around with it if you want. Okay, but there you go. All right, really nice. Look at that. We've got that nice little padding. Padding is the key to making things look clean. Trust me when I say that. Padding is actually going to be that little icing on the cake that you're looking for in most cases. Trust me, right? So... That's looking pretty good, right? Now what I want to do is I want to animate that. I want it to look way more funky than this. So if I refresh my portfolio page, you can see I get this nice little animation, right? How the hell do I do that? How do I get animations in my in my app? So the way we do animations is we're going to use Framer Motion, right? So Framer Motion is an amazing production-ready animation library for React, okay? Ibrahim, thank you so much. I'll continue to share tips if you're finding them useful. We're going to click read the documentation like so. And the first thing we're going to do is actually install this thing, right? So how the hell do you install it? We go to introduction and we should have a intro for installing this somewhere. Well, I'm trying to show you where the heck it is because I've already done it. Um, okay, never mind. Let's just go ahead and just jump into it, I guess. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to install it myself. So I'm going to do yarn add frame of motion. So I'll show you right now. Let's pop this out of the way. So command J, free terminal, yarn add frame of motion. Okay, there we go. Prane says, hey, Sonia, I landed my second internship a week ago. Thank you so much. Thank you, dude. That is incredible. Green says, um, no, Mela says, can you upload it afterwards? Yes, it's going to be uploaded. It's, it, all my lives go straight up on YouTube afterwards by default, okay? So it's a one-shot take, right? <laughs> so in this case, we've got that up. Um, so we've got frame motion in there now. So I'm going to show you just how to use it. So first thing you need to do is you need to install the motion object from frame motion. Now I'm not going to go into the documentation too much. I'm just going to show you how it works, okay? So where we have a normal div, when we're using frame motion, the way we do it is we go ahead and say motion.div, right? So motion.div. And you can see that my closing bracket also changed. Now in frame motion, there's so many ways of animating things on your page but typically the way it would work is you have an initial value so where does the x positioning should be initially before the animation triggers or where should y be or what should the opacity be before i trigger an animation then you tend to have an animate and the animate is basically where do i want my animation to eventually reach so should i be going from an initial opacity of zero to an animated opacity of one so that way it animates nicely between the two x value and then another x value so it animates between the two so forth okay so that's how we're going to essentially do this. So here I'm going to have an initial value. So initial. And this takes an object inside of it. So notice the two curly brackets. Here I'm going to say it's actually going to start off with a minus value of 500. Vito says it's a magnificent video. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Right. Also, the opacity is going to be zero. The reason being is because I want the opacity to start off zero. Right. And I'm also going to do scale. And you're going to see the nice little effect that's going to happen here. Right. So scale is going to be half initially. Right, so this should be a comma. 
Then what, what do we want to animate to? Okay, so in this case, I'm going to say animate and I'm going to pass in an object. And here I'm going to say X should basically go to its basically default position. So it should be X of zero, right? The opacity should become one. And I want to make the scale become its regular size. Thank you so much for the donation, Senpai. Amazing content. I appreciate you, brother. And guys, just like that, 600 likes already. What is happening? Thank you, guys. Let's hit 1,000 today. Come on, let's hit 1,000. This is the energy we're after. I cannot believe the retention. I'm going to keep dropping videos every week if this is the case. Right? Let's hit save right now. Now, what I want you to see is, whoa, did you see that? Look at this. If I hit refresh, bam, super fast. Look at that. Right now, it's kind of too fast, if anything. I need to kind of be a bit slower because it's kind of phasing me out. Right. So, in this case, what we can do is we're going to say transition. This is the next magic thing, right? Transition. And what I want you to do here is put an object, right? They like their objects. And we're going to put duration. Okay. Now, duration, I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be in seconds. So, here I'm going to say 1.5 seconds. Now, let's see how that is. Refresh. Ooh, that's clean, guys. What do you think? I really like that. I think that looks really good, right? So that is imme like immediately a win for me, right? So now you can see that's exactly how it's actually going to come in here. Bam, beautiful, right? So, so slick. So if you don't know about frame of motion, destroy that like button because I'm changing your life here. I swear, I promise you, okay? All right, the second one we're going to do is this one. So again, motion dot div so very simple to use and then we're going to do an initial state this initial state is going to be essentially the same but it's going to be the opposite direction so rather than going minus 500 i'm going to go 500 in the right direction which means forward okay so there you go and i agree with you it's way better than the um, um the, the kind of boring css animations that you do regular javascript uh, that kind of regular html stuff Oh my God, I got made regular CSS stuff. It's better than that. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Wow. Okay. And then we're going to animate to the following. So I've lost myself here. Animate to this. So object, bam. Okay. Next thing you know, I want to do this one slightly different. I want to do a duration of one. So you can really feel free to play around with it as you wish, whatever you want to do. But the point is, is that when I hit save and when I hit refresh, wait for it, bam. That's lovely, right? That's really nice. Let's actually do 1.5. It's kind of jarring me a bit. 1.5, hit save, refresh, and there you go. Boom. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Like, come on. We're going to take that same principle and eventually have this living and breathing circle effect and all this cool stuff on our page right so amazing amazing stuff cool to see the likes are flying you guys are enjoying this right now i can tell okay so that is actually the um the header done right the head is actually done so at this point we're going to go back into our index and we're going to get rid of this comment because we are now done with the header awesome stuff daniel james with a five pound donation great work sonny i love your data layer explanation about redux it's brilliant i just landed a job at deloitte digital and you were a big help dude Firstly, massive congrats. Deloitte, amazing company. Daniel James, everyone clap that dude, man. Thank you, Jay. Screenshot that and thank you for the donation. I appreciate you, brother. And I'm glad the Papa Fam could help you achieve that goal. That is amazing, dude. Wow, this is the energy of the Papa Fam, guys. Like, it's honestly just, we're all about helping each other here. That's it, right? It's just free content to help you guys grow, become a better developer. That is it. And make sure you actually have some water, please, <laughs> for the life of me, because you will you will burn out. I promise you. It happened to me with any. All right. So at this point, we're going to go to the next section. So the next section is a hero banner. This is incredible stuff, guys. Honestly, you guys are. I just can't believe the retention right now. Okay. So what we're going to now do is we're going to have sections, right? So a section is an SEO friendly way of saying, basically telling any SEO thing that that is a section of your page, right? So in this case, I'm going to say section. Now here... This section is going to have an ID. He goes, thanks guys, bricking myself for the project. Dude, it's normal, it happens. If you do want to go ahead and have mentorship in the community, if you ever get stuck, that kind of stuff, feel free to come over to um, Zero to Full Stack Hero. We've got loads of people just like you who are working at big companies, awesome stuff. We help each other out there. But yeah, uh, oh, that's amazing, dude. All right, so at this point, we've got the ID of here. Here, okay. This is going to allow us to actually scroll back to there at some point later. And I'm going to teach you how to have this amazing scroll at like uh, behavior. So you see how it snaps. So I'm not like, say if I scroll there and I let go, it's going to snap to the most closest place. So if I go far enough, then it go. So that way we've got this kind of nice snappy behavior inside of our web page. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to create a hero component. Okay. So oops, no, not that. Okay. Hero, there we go. 
Now, the hero component, let's go ahead and jump into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a hero.tsx like so, Come close that down. And we're gonna do t TypeScript RFCE, there you go, bam. And we've got the hero component like so. Now, inside this hero component, this is essentially gonna represent this. All right, so we're gonna have the background circles, the picture, all of this good stuff is gonna be coming from that right now, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do this. So let's firstly import this. So we go here and we pop it in like so. And now you can see we've got hero, <laughs> lovely. It always will throw me off that well, it's incredible. All right, 20 likes away from 700, guys. Just keep smashing that like, thank you so much. All right, at this point, we've got the hero going pretty well. And I'm gonna go ahead and start building this out. Okay, so. Let's get into a nice focus mode. This is my kind of vibe when I'm, when I'm coding. All right, so we're actually gonna be using a typewriter library to go ahead and have that awesome kind of, you know, typing effect. Now, the one that we're gonna use is something called React Simple Typewriter. Very easy, very easy to install. You just simply chuck it in Google. I'll show you guys for yourself. React Simple Typewriter, very nice library. And for those of you wondering, why don't you build this stuff yourself? Because you don't have to. That's honestly the straight up thing. You don't have to build everything from scratch. Yes, some libraries are heavier than others. So when you go to production, it's worth just checking, okay? Uh, amazing stuff, another $5 donation. Appreciate you. I watched way too much Haiku. Thank you, that's his name. Uh, he goes, follow you a month ago, work side by side doing your project and learn so much. Thank you for the great content. Thank you, dude, so much for that donation. I appreciate you, bro, All right? Nazmo says, best you in the world. Again, thank you so much, guys. We're gonna install this like so, Command J, and we're gonna pop that in just like that, right? So everything's looking pretty good so far, and we're five likes away from 700. God damn it, guys. I mean, I'm just watching it. As soon as it hits, I'm gonna lose my mind, all right? 700 likes, go for it, go for it. I can see it, I can see it. Someone's punching it. Someone click that button. All right, so at this point, we're installing it, and then I'm gonna show you how to pop it into our app. So I'm gonna inst uh, import two things. And there's loads of ways to actually implement this exact library. There's a few different ways you can do it. Um, oh, wow, wow, it just it, it, it popped up. 705, that's it. Oh man, a thousand likes, let's go. God damn, I know someone's, someone's gonna say it in the replay. They're gonna be like, what the hell is he going crazy for? But I'm telling you, it's nuts. It's crazy. Like, I can't believe there's that many people just got, going nuts over this video. All right, let's go ahead and hit save and we're gonna implement it like so. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is we actually need to use something called a use typewriter hook. Okay, so in this case, we're, we've got something like this. We've got text and I've got this from their documentation, okay? And it's use typewriter, use typewriter. And what we do is we pass in an object. And inside of here, we've got something called words. And the words, you see it can be developer, designer, creator, that kind of stuff. In our case, I've got a kind of cool, geeky kind of vibe going on. I've got something like this, right? I've got guy who loves coffee.tsx and then I've got but loves to code more. And then the, the first one I'm gonna say is something like, hi, my name is Sonny. Hi, my name is, the name's Sonny, right? The name's Sonny, Sango, there we go. Bam. Right? And we're eventually going to make that dynamic as well. So it'll pull in, right? So you guys can feel free to do whatever you want to do there, right? The next thing I want to do is I'm going to pop in a loop, okay? So a loop, and I'm going to say, yeah, it should loop through. I want it to keep going through and through and through. And I want it to stay on it for like a little bit. So 2000 milliseconds is about enough time, right? So a delay, oh, sorry, delay speed. Delay speed of 2000 milliseconds. Okay, that's why I like TypeScript. It calls me out on what I'm wrong. Okay, so we've got our div there. There's, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first go ahead and we're gonna implement that in just a second as well, right? I'm not gonna just chuck that in just yet, but I'll show you how that works effectively. It's actually fairly straightforward and easy to go ahead and put in. So if I had like a P tag here and I just pop in that text now, you will literally see that text being rendered out. Oops, let me go ahead and do that. So you'll see this go ahead and gets thrown on the screen. So if I go back to my code now, you see that guy who loves coffee.tsx and just like that, it works, right? And even nicer than that, you can next to it have a cursor and you can put a color on it and you see how the cursor's next to it, right? I'm gonna show you right now, actually, I'm just gonna, might as well do this. Um, I'm gonna change this to a, um, a span tag. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna have this whole thing surrounded inside of H1 because it's kind of important uh, field. It could be a H1, H2, depends on you. And you see how now it's next to it. So it kind of looks like a typewriter typing, right? So we're spanning a field and we've got the cursor next to it, okay? So without further ado, let's jump in further. We've got our, uh, let's go ahead and create the background circles, okay? But before we do any of this, I actually wanna get the background looking the right color because it's kind of jarring right now looking at the wrong color. And I don't know what I'm staring at properly. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that, right? So 
Uh, firstly, I've got the background color saved in the RGB format, and I'm going to show you how we can add that. Um, so that way you guys can feel free to do it yourself in whatever color you wish. I've got a nice kind of tonal gray. So here inside of the homepage, I'm going to do class name. I'm going to say BG RGB 36, 36, 36, right? And as you can see now, it's gone ahead and actually made it um, the uh, this nice gray. But I'm going to actually go ahead and also say that the text should be white. So every bit of text as a master rule should be white. And I'm also going to say that it should have a height of the screen. Oops, sorry, space that out, height of screen. Okay, hit save and there you go. That's a lot nicer already. Okay, so really, really cool stuff so far. I think it's one of, one of my funnest streams. Like it's really, really it's amazing. So you can see right now we're slowly getting there. We're slowly forming, right? So now we're going to build this amazing bit right here, right? And look at, if you noticed, it's, it's breathing, it's pulsing, and there's like a little pulse here, right? It's really, really cool. Uh, hey says, I got to go. You've earned my sub, so I'll be rewatching this when it's uploaded. Thank you so much, dude, for tuning in. That's what the energy is about. Papa Fam is here to stay, right? So let's go into our code back to our hero and let's carry on with the hero so at this point um <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and uh background circles right no somebody says jay's only here to screenshot stuff no jay is actually killing it and he's doing a lot more than that okay um so we're gonna go ahead and implement something called a background circles and this is going to be a component right and i'm going to show you this because it's quite a little, a little bit of work involved in this right so we're going to have background circles like this uh b i'm going to go ahead and pop in the components dot tsx create the file rfce uh typescript rfce let's go ahead and do that typescript rfce cool and then in background circles we're going to go ahead and make it look really nice now obviously this is going to be an animated thing so we're going to have frame of motion inside of here and then i'm going to go ahead and actually have five divs that rec that represent each of the different circles each of these divs aren't going to exist so i'm going to show you a little trick you can do a command d oh no actually you know what let's just do that again let's do uh, five and while we've got the cursors i'm going to go ahead and click option 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 click and i'm going to get rid of those and just type in div forward slash because self-closing divs i'm going to show you a little trick right now okay so firstly i want to go ahead and pull this in so background circles let's import it so i can see something happening and here it's freaking out because we haven't got anything there we go and i'm going to show you how you can actually have a div represent an object like a shape okay so it's kind of cool when you want to draw something on the screen you can go ahead and customize it out as you need to do so right 700 likes literally nearly 800 let's go guys honestly incredible incredible stuff Okay, so, oh, nice, Einstein's dude. I'm sharing the link to my classmates. Thank you, dude, that's what we're doing. That's, that's awesome, man. Here, we've got class name. I'm gonna start off with the first circle, okay? So this is gonna be a, we're gonna give it a border, and I wanna give this one a gray border. So very subtle gray, but in fact, before we do this gray, I'm actually gonna go ahead and say it's just like a red, so you should be able to see it, right? So there we go, we got our red border. Then I'm gonna say it's a rounded full. Right, so it's a circle border, but right now you're like, no, it's not. I can't see a circle border. Well, that's because you haven't got a height and width around it, right? So I'm gonna give it a set height and width of 200 pixels. Now notice the square brackets. That's something called the just-in-time compiler. By putting a square bracket in, you're telling Tailwind I wanna use a custom value and at runtime, it builds that utility class and gives it to us. So there you go, we've got a nice little circle, right? Then I'm going to go ahead and say um, margin top at the at the top should be 52 and I want to animate this one. So animate and it should be a ping. So now we've got this beautiful animating circle. All right. Really, really nice. And um, what I'm now going to do is that now that you can see the color, I'm going to change it back to the color I wanted. And I'm going to show you how we're going to eventually get the desired effect. So bam, we've got this nice little gray uh, little thing going on. And um, this is ping. Yep, that's fine. And what I'm going to do is the uh, surrounding div, I'm going to give this a class name and this is going to be a relative uh, container. Now, the reason why this is relative, guys, is because I'm going to do a bit of sorcery, right? A bit of wizardry to go ahead and get them centered, right? So you can do it however you want. This is the way I'm going to do it. So justify center. So now we've centered the element. I'm also going to do item center to go ahead and centralize that as well. Now, here, what I'm going to do is make this actually be absolutely positioned. So absolute positioning and that way it goes to the top right and eventually we're going to push it down as so right? it's only absolutely positioned relative to the parent hence why we have the relative right so at this point you could have left it you could do whatever you want really right but i'm going to show you my way of doing it right so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for two more circles but notice how the height and width changed 
on these two circles all right so i'm going to go ahead and get rid of those and now you can see i've got two more circles exact same code except the height and width changed and then both of them have got margin 52 at the top okay so looking kind of nice and then i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing but except this time i'm going to slightly change it all right i'm going to have all of the same properties so i'm going to have the border um, up to this point the same properties i'm going to change the color and i'm going to do opacity of 20 as well okay so border is going to be a nice kind of you know the papa fam um kind of uh you know arc the color we like right the kind of uh the papa fam color and then i'm going to give it a height of 650 width of 650 absolutely position margin top and i'm going to make this one pulse right so it's going to be sitting there pulsing okay and now you can see it's pulsing right so it looks pretty good and then the final one is going to be uh, as follows. Now, I do want to show you, if you did get rid of absolute, you see what happens. If you get rid of absolute, they're going to be kind of like stacked next to each other, squashed up. Whereas if I absolutely position them, they're kind of layered up, right? So at this point, the final one is going to be the same as the previous normal circles, except they're going to be 800 pixels. Okay, 800 pixels. Now, okay, looking pretty good. All right, so if we were refresh this, it looks good. It's definitely not at this level yet, where we've got this amazing grow effect going on but i will show you how we do that okay so at this point what i now need you to do is go back to hero okay so head over back to hero and i want you to go ahead and change the div the surrounding divs properties so this one is going to be a height of screen this this hero okay height of screen it's going to be a flex flex column so everything's going to be stacked up in column fashion we're going to do space between the y components of eight the items should be in the center okay hit save and i'm going to say justify it center as well and as you can see it pushed it down all right then i'm going to go ahead and say um we're going to say the text should be central text should be central and the overflow should be hidden like so okay and as you can see we've got slightly different looking um situation right now um that's because i haven't actually done something correctly so let me go back to my index um oh yeah so i need to figure out some more index things over here so index there we go now back at index i need to do a few little changes to over on this side right so first thing i want to do is i'm going to make the it's snappable so as we scroll through it's going to be snappable containers right so what i want to do here is i think am i look zoomed in no we're not okay there we go okay so first thing I want to do is I want to go here and I'm going to type in the following. I'm going to say snap on the Y axis. Okay. And I want the snap to be mandatory. Okay. I think you missed a dash on the first div border color. Um, let me just double check that. First div border color. Yes, my friend, you are correct. Thank you. Border color. There you go. Good stuff. All right. And then let's go back here and uh snap and it's going to be mandatory so you can make it proximity which means that as you get near to that it's going to pull it in i'm going to make it mandatory all right the overflow i'm going to say is scroll okay so that way it's going to be scrollable okay so you see how it's scrollable right now right and then we're going to have um i'm going to customize the scroll bar later and this is going to have a z of zero and that's because we're going to have some text layered up on top of it afterwards okay now, the first thing I also want to do is I think I need to change my head. No, my head is already stuck. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to our hero. Sorry, when I code so many different things, it kind of gets overlapping and I have to kind of re-remember what happened. All right. Um, okay, that's it. Yeah. So let's go back into our hero right now. Yeah, that's it. I know why it's happening. Okay. So here, next step is we need to go ahead and center this one. So class name here, we're going to say snap center all right now notice how it snaps to the center now so you see when i try and scroll it's snapping to the center so if i refresh it's going to snap to the center okay so that looks pretty good all right so it's snapping to the center so notice how no matter where i am it's got this like elastic effect all right so even there it's not it's not at the top it snaps down to the center okay so let's uh check this out. oh nearly 800 likes let's go guys I love the I love the focus. This is so cool. Um, feels like a radar. Yeah, I know it feels like a radar, right? It's really nice. But right, let's add, let's add in the um, the really cool bit, which is the animations. So let's go into our motion. So this div right here, I want to make it a motion div, okay? But by the way, the key there to making the snap work is you set the parent as snap y snap mandatory, and you set everything at height screen. That's because I want it to literally be snapping at a height 
sort of setting, right? So everything's at a height value. Here I'm snapping depending on how big these are, right? And then your child will be snapping. So you can say snap center or snap sort of front and that kind of stuff, right? So that's how we've done that. So on this point, the hero, let's go ahead and, uh, and get this animation going pretty well. So this inside of background circles, let's go into background circles and I'm going to change this to a motion div right here. So motion dot div like so. Okay. Now on this bit, I'm going to go ahead and say the initial is going to be a, a value of opacity zero. So I want it to be like kind of like unseeable in the beginning, right? So you can't see that in the beginning. So there we go. We've got an initial value of zero. So it's gone, right? So what should we animate to? Well, in fact, I'm not going to use the animate. I'm going to use a, uh, no, I'm going to use animate. Sorry. I'm doing that later. So animate. I'm actually going to go ahead and say this. So this is what's pretty cool, right? If you can either have one value, so animate from zero to one, or you can pass in an array. And what it does is it will go ahead and based on the transition time. So if I said 2.5 seconds, I can pass in an array of five things and it's going to give every single one a fifth of the time to basically keyframe through the animation. So I'll show you what I mean, right? So if I put scale here and I gave it a like one, I want to do one, two, two, three, one, right? So now it's gonna basically divide up the time of the animation. So if in this case, if I said transition and I passed in here a duration of 2.5 seconds, 2.5 seconds, every single one's gonna get like a 0.5 of a second of an animation. So if I hit save now, we can't see it yet. So I need to do the opacity. Let's go ahead and do the opacity. And I've actually worked out something like sort of funky here, right? It kind of like flickers in. Right, so let no point more point two four eight zero point one. So it kind of flickers out. So watch what happens. Right, see how it kind of like it kind of post its way in because it went no point one, no point two, so forth, and then it kind of came back to life. Um, what did I do here? I kind of messed something up. I expected a string you got undefined. Likely okay. So I've actually messed uh, something over here. Um, there we go. It's strange. Oh, um, okay. There we go. Yeah. So there we go. There we go. We got the scale effect. You see how it's scaling in and then it's doing the opacity. And the final one I want to do is change the border radius, right? So border radius, I'm going to give it a different value as well. Now check this out, guys. Boom, boom, comes in. It's clutch. Now, if I go ahead and refresh, like just look how clean that is, guys. Like that is amazing, right? It looks so, so slick. Beautiful. Right, really, really clean animation. Oh, there we go. We got the hundred percent. Right, so I'm gonna keep that there for a minute. Right, so at that point, it looks really, really nice. Okay, so we got our background circles in check, very much. So I'm gonna go ahead now and go back to my hero, and let's finish off the rest of the build. Okay, so underneath the um, background circles, I'm gonna have an image. Now for this image, right now, I'm just gonna do a hard value. Now, yes, yes, yes. Before you say anything, if you're using Next.js, you should be using the image component to go ahead and render your images. For the sake of time, I'm using regular image components, but what you should do is check out my video. It's gonna be here floating around afterwards, some Next.js tutorial for what you should be using for images. And I want you to replace it and whitelist your URLs. So that way it optimizes the loading, but you should be doing that, okay? You should should be doing that. All right. Oh, God damn it. We're at 800 likes. Jay, let's go. Update me, dude. That's crazy. 800 likes. Smashing it. Wow. Okay. So we've got the uh, eight image right here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this image over here. So I'm going to copy this image and we're just going to use this one for now. And yes, you should be doing something of your own. Okay. So there you go. Looks massive right now. Okay. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do class name. And I'm going to say that this should be a relative. It should be rounded. It should be full. Height of 32, width of 32. MX auto. It's save. And you can see it. And the final thing is rounded for. Oh. Rounded fill. Rounded full. Okay. And then I'm going to say object should cover the picture. So then that way, in case it's a bit bigger, uh, bigger and so forth. All right. Um, so let's see what's going on. And then we got this. So image looking good. And then underneath the image, we're going to have a div. Okay. And this div is going to have all of the text like so inside of it. So this is looking really, really clean right now. Guys, just, just take a second to appreciate that. Like that is beautiful, right? For a UI, that is actually amazing. Like as in, look at it, it's like living and breathing. Like if I refresh, look at that. Oh, look, wow. 
when someone comes to your website, it's just like, oh, wow, this is, this is a kind of a cool welcome, right? Like really, really nice sort of way to en enter someone in. And it shows that you can do it because it's done in Tailwind CSS. So you can actually say that. Yeah, this was done with Tailwind CSS, right? Um, okay, so we've got our H1, right? And then under, on top of that, I'm going to have a slightly smaller, and I know it's out of context, but it should be like the, the row here. So I'm going to say software engineer, right? Uh, I know it's H2, H1 based because it's, it's less of an importance than my name, right? Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and say um, tracking. So I'm actually going to do that afterwards. Let's say text should be small. It should be uppercase. Okay. And there you go. That doesn't look that good, right? So first things first, I'm going to show you how we can transform this in a crazy way. So change the color, make it blend in a little bit. Pad it out from the bottom a tiny bit, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the tracking. Now the tracking is, is basically the spacing between characters. Now, as you can see, that's the max tracking. But if I wanna do custom, I can put like, just as I said before, it's just in time compilation. So I can put square brackets in, I can say 15 pixels between each letter. And just like that, that looks so clean. Uh, that looks like something like some avatar thing, right? That looks so good, right? So that looks really, really clean, right? So we've got some software engineer stuff happening there. Then we're going to go ahead and have the next bit. So for the text, I'm going to go ahead and say class name. And it's not the span, sorry. The span is actually, well, for the span, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say margin right should be three. So it's not right next to that. The H1, I'm going to go ahead and say the text should be 5XL. And I'm going to go ahead and say on a large screen, it should be 6XL. So remember, we can change those values, right? Based on the screen. So mobile view, 5XL, large screen, 6XL. The font should be semi-bold. And I want the padding on the x-axis to be 10. All right, guys, nearly at 900 likes. Let's go. That's crazy, All right? So as you can see, we're behind our little background, right? So I'm going to show you how we can fix that afterwards. Do not worry. Um, but we will get that working as well, okay? So... Once we have that uh, uh, scroll pixel, what the hell? Um, scroll, scroll, scroll. That's not correct. Uh, when did I write that? Semi bold, font semi bold. There we go. Interesting. All right. So on H1, after that, I'm going to have a div. Now in here, I'm going to have about experience, skills, and project. All right. So these are going to be five different buttons or four different buttons. I'm going to say button times are four and hit save. The first one's going to be about. The second one is going to be experience. The next one is going to be skills and the next one is going to be projects. Okay. So there you go about skills, projects and so forth. Now, instead of repeating class names here, right? What we can do is we can go ahead and give this something like hero button class. If I go into my globals, right? CSS, this is where you can create your own custom utility classes, right? So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm actually going to go ahead and type in at layer components. So basically what I'm doing is I'm injecting my own custom CSS utility class into the components layer that we import with Tail and CSS. And then I'm going to go ahead and say the hero button class. And all you need to do to make sure that you can actually write your tail in CSS here is type in at apply keyword. Okay. So now I'm going to say padding X of six between our different buttons, padding Y of two. And notice how every single one is getting that right now. Okay. Then I'm going to say border. The border of these buttons, I want it to be like a kind of nice dark gray tone. Right. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So very dark gray tone, rounded full. I want these to be full buttons like so. I'm going to make it uppercase. The text should be small. So text small, hit save. And there you go. We're slowly getting it. Right. I want the tracking to be the widest because that's enough for us at this point. So widest tracking. Okay. I'm going to make the text a gray of 500. All right, let's go 500 amazing stuff. Retention is incredible right now, guys. Thank you for tuning in and sticking with me. All right. Then I'm going to say there should be a transition. And reason being for this one is because as I hover over it, I want the border to change color and I want the text color to change color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop in the following values. OK, so these are going to be two rules and I'll explain what they do right now. So the first one is saying hover. I'm just going to pull this online. So it's saying hover. The border is a custom color and the divided by 40 means 40 percent opacity of that color. And I want to do the same with the text. Right. So now, if you can see, if I hover over this, guys, um, let me hit save. Let me refresh. Sorry. Um, OK, let me see. Hover text, hover. Hover border, hover text. What have I messed up? Oh, yeah, sorry. There you go. 
Okay, so okay. The reason why I can't hover this, by the way, is simply because I haven't got the um the text should be extra small, by the way. Yeah, I was thinking that's too big, right? It's because of the layering. The layering's wrong. Right now, the, this circle is in front of us, right? So I'm gonna change that and fix that. But overall, you can see how we've created our own um helpful little thing here, right? So at this point, I want to change the div class name to padding top of five. I want to separate it from the top a little bit. And I'm going to make these all clickable link components from uh, Next.js. So these are special link components and it helps us to pre-render the next destination. In this case, it doesn't really matter because the next destination is actually going to be on the same page. But that's fine. We can go ahead and continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for all of these right now. And I'm going to do one more down here for this one. And all of these are complaining because they require a href. Now, I want to go ahead and hyperlink down to a different point in the page. So this one, I'm going to click it and it should go down to the about section based on the ID that we give here. So ID hero should be going to hero and so forth. So in this case, it should be href equals. Um, and this one is going to be um, a experience. So it should be hashtag experience and so forth right we're going to do the same thing with these two as well i'm going to pop that in right here this one is going to be skills this one is going to be projects and that's going to allow us to have clickable buttons that take us to different areas of the web page now this fixed this layering issue because that is kind of an annoying thing that's going to stop us from testing our website right our users are going to be clicking around they're like whoa he doesn't even know what he's doing with the z index right so let's go ahead and fix that okay so heading back over to hero i'm going to show you where we begin the journey so right now on our hero um on our index screen we should have a z index of zero at the top right so this is basically saying that's the base layer that's what i'm going to say zero sits at the next thing i want to do is go into my about section okay so into my about sorry into my um my sorry what have i done here i'm going into my uh hero section sorry hero section yeah and then on the hero section i'm going to go ahead and do the following so we need to make uh let's go here da, da, da. okay that's all good all right screen in background circles where have i done my z index again i've completely lost where my z index is z index of 20 there we go right so here where we have the software engineer all that good stuff we're going to say a z index of 20 exists here but you see how it's not working yet right or is it working yet? yeah it is working yet that's it nice right so my bad I, my eyesight's a little bit dodgy right now i've been looking at this computer too long right so you see the reason why this worked is because this in index is greater than this one and i've done 20 because i want to have some leeway right if you did want to have something between there you could do z10 right so that kind of thing so now we can test it if i click it you see for such about experience skills and projects bam just like that nearly at 900 likes let's go guys amazing amazing stuff that is the about section pretty much done guys so that's the top section looking incredible okay so that is actually looking amazing right now and it's fully working responsive that kind of stuff look at that bam amazing okay the next step is let's create the uh about section over here okay um and then we're going to go ahead and continue yeah we'll just continue on take it at a natural pace so index.tsx let's go ahead and create our section right here so section inside of this section we're going to have an about page right now this about page remember all of this data will eventually be coming from sanity's uh content platform so you're going to eventually be able to customize all this information on sanity publish it and then we should see this on our front end right so it's actually going to be incredible once we get this working okay so let's go ahead and do this right now and we're going to go into our components and i'm going to create an about.tsx uh file we're going to do typescript rfce bam there we go we've got an about section like so now what i like to do is hit save go over here and do the import and let's just prep ourselves so id here is going to be about that way when we click the about it will take us to that appropriate point we also want it to be a snap anchor point so that way it kind of snaps to it when we kind of scroll down here i want to uh, snap it to the center now the hero i said center notice i actually want to make this start okay so you see how it brought it a tiny bit up because i want it to kind of snap towards more to the top than the bottom now the next one i want to do snap towards the center of its image right so so now we're inside of our about uh page inside of this page notice what i'm about to do right every single div parent or child component is actually going to go ahead and have uh, from that kind of snapping behavior a height of screen 
Okay, now you can see, look how it snaps between the two screens. So I'm literally like scrolling down and you see how it snaps as I let go of the scroll. But if I scroll hard enough, it snaps to that next. And look how it perfectly aligns at the top. All right, it's a really, really nice behavior here, right? Now, what we are going to do is we're going to say flex and I'm going to make it relative because I'm going to have an absolutely positioned element inside of it, right? This is going to be a flex column container. So we're going to have some flex column stuff inside of it. And then I'm going to go ahead and just prepare myself for later on. So eventually the text, I want it to be central inside this container on the medium screens and above, I want it to be left aligned. Now, if you're wondering what the heck is he building right now, we are building this about screen, okay? So we're building this about screen right now, okay? So once we've got that uh, MD left, we're going to go ahead and do um, on medium screens and bumps, it's going to turn to a flex row. Okay. So notice how on a phone, it's a column. And then on a bigger screen, it's a row. And look how responsive that is, guys. That is beautiful. All right. So everything's fully responsive here. All right. Smash the thumbs up button if you're excited to see how we do that. We're about to hit 900 likes. Let's go. Incredible energy right now. This is amazing, guys. Flex row. I'm gonna go ahead and say the max width should be seven XL, should be good enough for us. Panning X and the 10 axes, uh, there we go. Let me show you guys here. All right, so you see how it's centering already, it's starting to do its thing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say, we've already got the highest screen. I'm gonna say justify evenly the contents on the page. So there you go, justifying the, uh, we've only got one child, so it's put in the middle. MX auto and items should be central, there we go, okay? Now let's start doing stuff with the, the, the children components. So H3, I'm gonna say about. Now this one, these components, I'm actually gonna go ahead and make these absolutely positioned to the top every time. So you see this right here, about and so forth. They're actually gonna be absolutely positioned to the top and so forth, right? Don't happen there, all right? So it's gonna be absolutely positioned to the top, right? So we've got the H3 here. I'm gonna go ahead and say that this one should be, so this about should become absolutely positioned. So absolute. And I'm going to go ahead and say absolute top of 24. And we're going to follow this pattern quite quite a lot throughout the build, right? Uppercase, the tracking in this case, I want it to be 20 pixels because I want to get that nice kind of you know, spaced out effect. Look at that. I mean, the tracking makes such a clean, modern effect to your, to your design, right? Let's do text gray of 500 and let's do text of 2XL, All right? Bam. All right, look at that. Oof. Look at that. And I scroll down, it just snaps into place. Like, look at that. Incredible. Right, we're already building this like amazing UI right now, right? The next thing I want you to do is we're gonna have an image component, right? That's gonna be the picture of the user. So I'm actually gonna go ahead, copy this image URL for now, and then we're gonna eventually pull it from our CMS backend. I'm gonna paste it here just for a second so I have it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull in my framer motion at the top, okay? Now here, what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and have a motion.image component, okay? So a motion, oops. So there's gonna be a self-composed component. Let's get rid of that, that's fine. This will be, a, um, sorry guys, motion.image component, okay? And this is the same thing. It's basically an image component, but it does what we did previously before, right? So the source here is gonna be um, what I had here. So let's cut that, we can get rid of that now. Bam, put it there, and I have my picture, okay? But I can do all those cool things like animate, for example. So the initial animation here, I want it to be a case of it's going to be, oops, what am I doing, guys? Come on. Um, we're going to do a duration. I'm sorry, an initial value of X minus 200 because I want it to come in from the left, okay? And then I'm going to animate it and I want it to basically come back into normality at zero. But instead, actually, what I want to do here is rather than just animate when you kind of load the web page, I want it to be when I'm in the view. So while in view, okay? This is a cool way of doing it. So you can either do animate or you could do while in view. I'm gonna say X is zero. So now watch this guys, right? So only when I come into view, should it do it? Look at this, scroll down. So wait for it, scroll down, bam. You see how it just only when I came into view, it did that. If I go back up and I go back down, bam. And you see how it keeps doing it, right? So you can actually keep on doing that. If you don't want it to keep on repeating, all you need to do is simply say that you want the viewport to be once true, that's it. Right, you just have to say that. Now you'll see if I go back down, it doesn't do it again. So sometimes, if you know it's an Apple website, they kind of have it. You know, it, it pops in nicely, and then it doesn't keep doing it again. Make you laugh says you live. Yes, I am live, dude. <laughs> um, there you go. Right, so really nice stuff. Now it's too fast for my liking, so I'm going to make the transition a lot smaller. Um, somebody says this gives me thousands of ideas. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's why I want to do what we're doing. I love to inspire your creative thoughts. Right, duration 1.2. That looks good. 
all right let's go ahead and refresh and see how it's going all right so look at that firstly beautiful animation scroll down Oof. Icing on the cake, guys. Icing on the cake, right? Here we can actually say an opacity of zero. So let's even do this, right? Let's say opacity of zero. And let's do um, while in view, I want to go to a opacity of one as well. Opacity of one as well. Right? So let's do that one. Get rid of that. Hit save, refresh. And let's go down. And look at that. Oof. Smooth as hell, right? And then here I'm going to go ahead and say class name is going to be a. Um, I'm actually going to pull this upwards, right? Because eventually I'm going to have it on a mobile view kind of pulled up um, on the screen. So on a mobile view, I'm going to make it a little bit uh, sort of higher. So mobile view 20, it's going to kind of go um, a little bit down, sorry, so the opposite way. Uh, on a medium screen, I'm going to have a margin bottom of zero. So I'm going to get rid of that as we get bigger. Flex shrink zero. I do not want them to make my image smaller as if it, we run out of space. It should always stay at the size it's set at which is a width of 56 and a height of 56. I'm going to say that it's rounded for, and I want it to basically be object cover, which means that it doesn't distort the way you see it now, right? So that's how we get that. Then as it gets bigger, I want to change things. I want to say uh, on the uh, medium screens, I want it to be rounded uh, large. So uh, medium above is going to get rounded large. Medium above is going to become width of 64. Medium above is going to get a height of, oops, height of um, 96 and then on the extra large screens i'm doing a custom value that i've decided with pixel values okay now let's see this in action as it gets bigger medium screen changed and then it got even bigger and bam it changed to the extra large screen that i set the size all right so really really nice stuff with that said quick water break guys we're oh my god we punched out 900 likes wow Oh my god. All right, let's keep going. I'm so happy you guys are enjoying this right now. But don't forget, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. There's loads of people that are watching, aren't subscribed. So make sure you subscribe, support the channel, lets me know to keep on doing this stuff and keep giving you guys value, right? That's how I know. Okay. So we've got the about looking pretty good right now. And what we want to do is. We're going to go ahead and uh, Savvy says, Sonny, you're looking handsome. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> All right, so uh, it makes me die. All right, so we've got an image here. We're going to have a div with a H4 inside of it. And here I'm going to say something like, uh, here is a little background. All right, so that's what I want to set. That's actually going to be a hard coded value. You can change it. You can add it yourself afterwards. It's fine. What I'm going to do here is a, and I'm going to span something in now. I'm going to show you what we do right here is a little background. Okay like that here's a little background okay now what i'm actually going to do is firstly let's kind of style this up a bit so we get some look and feel so text for excel font semi bold okay semi bold done okay and for this div i'm going to go ahead and just start space now as well so there's a space between all the components inside of it of 10 padding x on the x-axis of zero and on a medium screen and above i want to give it a bit more padding so it can breathe okay there we go so there you go you see that we get a little bit of padding and so forth. Okay. Then I want to go ahead and do something nice, right? So notice how on my build, I've got here's a little background, right? So here's a little background. So here I'm going to go ahead and say something like, I'm going to have a span tag, a span tag, oops, span tag, like so. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. I'm going to pop it in like that, right? And as you can see here, what I can do is I can go ahead and put in a class name and I can put a little bit of styling just around that little bit. Aaron Harriman says, I really re only rediscovered your channel with Learning React Native. I love your content. It's really good. I immediately subscribed. And even on Saturday, I'm watching you now. Nice. That's what I'm talking about, dude. All right. Here we have underline. And what I can do here is I can style up the underlining. All right. What the hell? Okay. Here's a little background. All right. I'm going to have underline and I can do something called decoration. And I can actually give it a custom color. So I'm going to give it a pop of color and then I'm going to give it a uh, 50 opacity. So there you go. Here is a little background. See how nice? Little touches, little touches, right? Nice. Here I'm going to have a P tag, and this is going to be um, basically having some background information about me. So in this case, I've got a bunch of text here. So I'm just going to chuck this in. So we have some reference material. You can put Laura Mipsum, whatever you want there. All right. So there you go. I'm going to put class name, and this is going to be text uh, large. Just like that. Or oh, actually, in this case, it doesn't really have to be. It's, it's completely fine to be like that. Or oh, I'm going to make this actually a little bit smaller, in fact. I'm going to make this text uh, should be small. Okay, I mean, it's fine for now. It's completely cool for now. Okay, so with that said now, I'm actually going to go ahead and carry on uh, styling this out. So 
Um, okay. <laughs> Let's carry on. Yeah. So we've got this little background here. I don't know why I switched camera. Uh, I was thinking about that. So we've got this. I'm actually going to make this a little bit base. So let's do base. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's nice. So, all right. So nice. Looking pretty good so far. All right. Here's a little background. I'm sunny. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. All right. And uh, the next thing I want to do now is have it. So that way we have the um, animation triggering for the little background bit. Okay. So where it says about and so forth right so this mo this div outside is going to be a motion div right so this one right here we're going to say initial and we're going to have a while in view and then we're going to have a transition time so i'm just going to pop those in right now to save a little bit of time there you go okay and there you go guys look at that just like that as we come down it pops into view and it does what it needs to do okay so that is actually perfect that's what we wanted so if we hit refresh test your design out you can see hey name sunny blah blah, blah. scroll down bam just like that clean right awesome awesome stuff shapa says when i'm tired of work i watch your videos that's awesome man thank you for tuning in okay so about section done we're about to crank out the next section with the experience experience is the awesome bit here we've got these kind of awesome jobs that are going to be popping in and out then we're going to do skills then we're going to do projects then we're going to do contact and we're going to hook it all up to sanity cms so i'm going to go ahead and actually punch in at a higher speed right now so we can go ahead and get some stuff done all right, so stick with me. We've gone through some of the basic explanations. So we can kind of move a little bit faster now. So I'm going to cut this out, cut this out. We've got our two sections ready and then we're going to do experience. So a section and then we're going to have an experience. Or in fact, I'm going to call this one the work experience, something like that. All right, so we're going to have a work experience like so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and create this component. So work experience. And again, you can name them whatever you actually want. You might not like it. I know someone says, please make that text justify. Uh, feel free to do it, dude. I know I feel you, but I'm not going to jump around while I'm live. Um, I'm the same as you. I feel that. T -T TypeScript RFC. There you go. Okay. Uh, I just put this one done as a function, but the default export is fine. Right, you can change it up if you want. Savvy program, happy birthday. It's his birthday. Wait. All right. So let's go ahead and go into index. Let's import this. Pop it in like so. And he's watching me on his birthday. That's awesome, dude. Thank you. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is for work experience, we are going to have, see it's there. It's there. It's just not snapping, right? That's because again, we need to do a uh, class name snap center. Okay, snap center, All right? And we're also gonna give this an ID of experience. That way when you click it, you can do that. So I just wanna test that as well. So if I click on um, experience, you see how it takes me to experience. You just can't see it, right? About the perfect, but the experience is just there. We now need to make experience. Remember that trick? We're gonna make this a height of screen. Just that of screen. And now you'll have your, your different screens that are snappable. There we go, really, really nice um let's carry on so we've got the work experience someone says how's your bank holiday i'm actually in dubai right now but thank you for asking that my day is going well um okay so we've got a h3 so i'm gonna get rid of this and say h3 and here i'm gonna have experience so we're gonna firstly do that top little line right so the same thing we did last time it's exactly the same styling so i'm gonna go ahead and pop in the same styling that i had last time um, and this is going to be the same for each different time. So hence, I'm going to save a bit of time, pop in the styling like so. Okay. Now the surrounding div, I'm going to say it's going to be a flex container. It's going to be relative because that's going to be absolutely positioned according to, according to that. We're going to say that the overflow here is going to be hidden. And that's because eventually I'm going to have this kind of scrolling mechanism in play. So overflow should be hidden. Flex should be a column fashion. The text should be aligned left by default. Okay. And then on the medium screens and above, we're going to turn to a flex row. I'm going to change the max width to be full screen. I'm going to change the padding X and the, uh, to be 10. Uh, highest screen we've done. I'm going to say justify everything evenly. And I'm going to center it with MX. if I don't do MX or it's going to be left, it's going to be thrown to the left, which isn't nice. And item center should position my stuff in the center. There we go. Okay, so really, really looking nice so far. Um, you scroll smooth, so it won't just display section, but take you there. Yes, you can use scroll smooth, right? Feel free to implement it on your side. Um, but I'm just going to carry on with this pace, right? But yes, it's good, a good idea, right? So here we're going to have another div. And inside of here, guys, we're going to have experience cards. So lots of experience cards. And that's going to basically render out accordingly as you see here. These are going to be experience cards like so. Okay, so we're going to create that in just a second. But before we do that, 
let's go ahead and just set up our motion uh, so that way we've got everything kind of ready and working the way we needed it all right Corkex says i just found your light channel thank you so much dude he's always enjoying the content ibrahim says smash the like button yes guys we're nearly a thousand likes let's get to a thousand likes i'm gonna pump the energy up again let's get havana going and let's get the energy going guys all right so motion let's go ahead and do this so motion.div let's change this to that and then we're going to go ahead and say initial while in view and then we've got a transition time so same as last time right so this will tend to be the same on each screen because i like the consistency so now we've got the opacity we've got while in view and so forth right let's go okay so at this point i'm going to go ahead and create something called an experience card which is going to resemble this right so we're gonna have these different things be popping in. and look, look notice what i've done here i've done this nice hover effect it's like a cinematic focus feel right so it's looking really clean right now wow the likes are flying right now all right so at this point i'm going to create a uh, fo a file called experience card experience card and yes i know the naming is not great TypeScript, uh, RFCE, there we go. Well, it doesn't matter. You could use either or, it's fine, right? I'm going to annoy some people with that. Um, so we've got that going well, pretty good. Okay. And then this is going to be the experience card. So let's go ahead and firstly pop that in so we can actually see something on the screen. So we can see experience card. And eventually we're going to be mapping through and pulling these in, right? So I'm going to have a few like so being pulled in. Right, so four for now, you can see experience card. We're going to turn those into that. Right, so I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and say experience. So, I, uh, guys, I can't answer complicated questions like um, well, your thoughts on React Native versus Flutter and that kind of stuff when I'm live. Right, it's focus time right now. We'll answer those things in a, in a separate video. H3, we're going to do experience. But my thought is, in short, is React Native because you can do it web apps and mobile apps. It's better trade off in time. Right. For this one, I'm going to say it's going to be the same thing. Remember, absolutely position. These are going to be the same for every single screen, essentially, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pop that in. That's where we have that experience. No, sorry. What am I doing? Oh, my God. I've completely lost track. This is why I don't talk about other stuff. <laughs> okay. So we have this. Now, for this, I'm going to change these to articles, right? Because imagine, like, each different experience card being used in the SEO article, right? Okay. Jamie Davis says React Native because that is, oh, yeah, I agree, dude. <laughs> All right, so we're going to have an image at the top here. So for each of these cards, we're going to have an image. So I'm going to go ahead and just steal one of these images for now. And obviously, I didn't, I haven't worked at Amazon a few of these places. This is just demos, okay? I have not worked at these companies uh, at the moment. I have friends that work there, right? And I have had an interview at some of them. Um, and I got an offer from one, okay? I'm not going to say which one for now. But anyway, I, I work here. <laughs> I work for myself. Okay, so we're going to copy this right now. And we're going to do this. Someone says, I'm literally watching you and building a website. I have no idea how to build a website and rap, but I learned from you. You're saving me from getting fired. Thank you, dude. That's incredible. Uh, dude, girl, I'm not sure, but thank you. All right, so here we're going to have an image. It's actually going to be a motion image. So motion image. So let's just do image first. The source we're going to pop in now temporarily like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and style it out accordingly. So here I'm actually going to have a height and width of 32. And I'm actually going to pop in some of the styling by default. So this is just going to save a bunch of time, but you can pause it and understand based on what I've said before. So we've got rounded full. Uh, as we get bigger, it's going to change. It actually stays the same. Uh, as we go into extra large, width will change, height will change, and object cover, object center. Right? You can have object start as well if you want, object start, object end, that kind of stuff. Is it object start? object center top there you go so if you did object top you could do that as well but i'm just going to keep it center to fit the majority of things okay so really really nice um cool i'm going to make that a motion image so we're going to import our frame of motion like so import frame of motion and here i'll say motion dot image like so okay and this is going to animate in so we're going to have an initial a transition a while in view and i only want it to happen once so that's why we have this so y from y minus uh, 100 so it starts from the top comes back down 1.2 seconds goes from opacity of zero to one and then a viewpoint so once it's happened once i don't want it to happen again all right so that's kind of a cool way of doing this and then i'm going to go ahead and do the following and the reason being guys is because when this renders in yeah i kind of want it so that way once it's already rendered in with that nice animation i don't want it to keep on doing it when it should be a little bit more optimal okay so that's nice okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to have uh, a div underneath that okay so a div underneath that and inside of this div i'm going to have the details so in this case the job title that kind of stuff so i'm going to have an h4 and this is going to be the job title so imagine ceo of the puppy farm right that's me right now right so p tag i'm gonna have uh, the company so in this case the papa fam okay and then um we're gonna have a div 
and inside of this div we're going to have all of the different technology stacks that we're going to have right so tech used basically going to be a few of them right and then after that we're going to have a p tag and inside of there we're going to basically going to have the dates right so we're going to say uh, started work dot 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 dash ended dot 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 right so i'm just going to put in templates right now and then we're going to go ahead and fill those out as we need to and the final part here is we're going to have a list so it's going to be a unordered list so we're going to say here it's an unordered list and i'm just going to pop in for example five as an example here and just put in here saying test some or summary points summary points okay so we're just kind of drafting out our sort of structure here so we're going to eventually look like that i mean we do not look like that right now and you can see how the overflow is not working but we'll fix it okay don't freak out so the first thing i want to do is those lists don't have bullet points so i'm going to say it's a list with discs right the space between them is y of four i'm going to have a margin left of five so they're kind of indented and the text should be large if we do hit save there you go looks kind of clean already right so um yeah so many people are saying you know you should be using a um the next image tags yes i've already done that in plenty of videos and plus there is also a dedicated video and i've said that in the beginning if you get stuck or if you're wondering why is he using image tags check out that video convert them yourself i'm not gonna do everything for you but yeah you should be using them right um but yeah i have not ignored the fact that, that i need to use those okay so uh we've got that looking pretty good now for this div all right i'm going to go ahead and firstly say that this should have a panning oh god what have i done there for this div i'm going to say a panning x of zero and on the medium screens a panning x of 10. The reason being is on the medium screens i don't want it to um be so squished together right there you go it looks a bit better right so the next thing i want to do is uh just style out each of these individual texts so text for excel and you're probably wondering oh my god this looks horrible dude fix the overall parent container i will i'll do it <laughs> i like to trigger people all right so the papa fam this one let's just get this out of the way then we can move to the fun bit font bold text to excel and margin top of one okay there we go uh the, this one i'm gonna say eventually once we've got in there we're gonna say flex space between all these uh techie things of two margin y of two um for now what we could do i guess is just take one of them and i can just kind of showcase it for you so let's actually just copy that right now and i'll show you eventually what we'll be mapping through right so it'll be an image tag it will be this uh like kind of an image and they'll have a class name so let's go ahead and do a class name um, and it'll be a height and width of 10 so height and width of 10 rounded will be four okay rounded of four there you go and eventually i'll basically have a bunch of these so save 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 there you go get rid of those and there you go all right so see you above fam javascript 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 all right um looking good looking good and uh so that's kind of fresh um underneath that we've got the started work app so i'm going to go ahead and make that one an uppercase so uppercase uh padding on the y-axis of five because we need a bit more breathing room and I'm going to say the text should be gray of 300. Okay. On all the list we've already done and the list elements are fine the way they are. Okay. Now let's fix this because that looks horrible. I need that to now look like that. All right. So this is where the true magic is going to come in from the article styling. All right. So first things first, flex. All right. Guys, we're four likes away from 996. Okay. When this beat drops, if we hit over a thousand, I'll lose my mind. Smash the thumbs up button. Are we going to get a 997? 997 oh come on 999 999 did the beat drop oh shit it actually did it that is so sick all right if you're watching the replay it actually hit a thousand likes the second it dropped that is crazy stuff thank you guys all right they're gonna carry us drunk wow i just saw the number go wham straight up that was so sick <laughs> Oh man, and this is in an upcoming, this is in one of my vlogs when I'm showcasing the car. Oh, it's sick. Oh, wow. Flex column, let's carry on strong. Oh my God, you can see the smile on my face is stuck, right? Rounded, large. That's so cool, honestly. Jay, that was pretty cool. Someone said, I unliked and liked again. All right, so in this case, items should be, oops, center. Items should be in the center. There we go. So okay experience card item center and then we're gonna do space oops rounded large space between all of our children space y of seven flex shrink of zero so flex shrink of zero 
and you see that's why it's not sort of shrinking it down that kind of stuff um okay now let's kind of get to the interesting bit how, how are we going to figure this out so a width and a, i'm going to apply some width and large width and height constraints so in this case our width is 500 pixels on a medium screen i'm switching to 600 and on extra large i'm switching to 900 okay i want these to snap accordingly and so forth but you know what before i carry on with that i can't even bear to look at this anymore right because it's just so hard to read this so i'm going to go back to my experience my work experience i'm actually going to make this uh a scrollable div right so width for because it's so hard to see that otherwise right so flex that's better right uh space uh space x of five overflow x of scroll padding of 10 i want it to snap on the x-axis the snap should be mandatory i want it to have a scr uh, scroll bar we'll do afterwards actually and yeah so that so now you should see see it's not snapping yet right that's because in the child we haven't set snap rules so now i can go back to styling it because it was too hard for you lot to see otherwise right um mikoi princess is high sunny good stream thank you for tuning in the retention today is nuts i love you guys honestly it make my day um so here i'm going to do snap center right so snap center and then i'm going to say the background color should be a slightly off gray with a padding of 10 i'm going to add that in so padding of 10 and off gray now look at this it snaps to the center it doesn't even matter what screen uh, screen size it is it's all done in a way where it's not hard-coded values right it's dynamic so it doesn't matter if you're changing stuff and all that kind of goodness right now i'm going to say the opacity should be 40 but when i hover it should go back to 100 percent right so opacity 100 percent when i uh but when i hover when otherwise it's 40 so that and then right now it's kind of popping into aggressively right so firstly when i hover over i want it to be a cursor pointer then i'm going to say it should have a transition only on the opacities i don't want to waste stuff here transition only on the opacity I want the duration to be 200 milliseconds or yeah 200 milliseconds pretty fast and overflow should be hidden bam hit that look at that look look oh my god like what the hell man like that is beautiful i don't even care that is lovely all right and let's just stress this out a little bit more with the summary points let's go ahead and just like have uh some bit more juicy stuff let's just go ahead and do something like that okay so in this case uh i'm actually did do overflow afterwards but for now i'm just going to keep it there but yeah okay the, what you could do is if you don't want it to touch the top you can make this a scrollable container which is perfectly easy to do you set a height you do scrollable for now i'm just going to leave it like this because we're a bit struck on time i have so much left to do okay but make that scrollable and you can do the following okay looks really really clean though so far okay so this is looking great guys really really nice stuff we are getting towards the finished product so you guys can see everything is coming closely closely together right so with that said we've got the about we've got the experience done and uh we will customize the scroll bars afterwards so i will show you how to do that as a finishing touch more than anything right let's go on to the skills now skills is the next section this is this bit over here so we're going to go ahead and pop that in right now so i'm going to pass in a section the id of this section is going to be skills so it's going to be skills like that it's going to have a class name and this is going to snap towards i believe the center but i just want to double check actually i'm going to do this one towards the start the next two are going to be snap start All right snap start and then we're going to go ahead and pop in the skills component okay so skills component we are moving over to the next thing right here so create a new file called skills.tsx typescript rfce boom and inside of our skills let's firstly import back over here and let's start getting rid of these ugly things there we go bam right so the next thing is you can see skills so firstly remember as we do always we should set the class height of screens that way it's going to take up the maximum height of that screen and we can scroll snap to it nice right everything's going pretty good sanity is coming up very shortly so we have a huge chunk now dedicated to sanity very very shortly so stay tuned it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun okay right this is our best live yeah this is crazy honestly All right so skills are looking pretty good and um now we're gonna go ahead and jump into skills and it's gonna get crazy i'm telling you we got type script we got sanity loads of cool stuff like, if you think they were on the verge of anything yet it's actually getting nuts better very shortly okay so stay with me All right so motion.div so motion.div looking great and then inside of skills oops inside of skills 
I'm going to go ahead and say H3. And this is going to have the header. Remember, I said it every time. It's going to be the same pretty much throughout. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that styling uh, for the header. There we go. Skills is in there, right? Then I'm going to go ahead and style this out. So flex relative, because I've got an absolute position inside of it. Flex column. Text should be center. And on the medium screens and above, text should be left aligned. Flex row on extra large, right? So flex row on the extra large, flex row. And I wanna put a max width constraint of 2000 pixels. So I'm customizing it a bit here, right? Extra large screens, I wanna do a padding on the uh, X axis of 10, right? So we're sort of customizing it for the large screens here. The minimum height here should be the screen. But if you do want to extend it, see minimum height. So you could actually go ahead and do minimum height as opposed to your height. And that way it can go over, but it will still snap to the minimum, uh, the center, right? Justify center. That's a good way of getting around that problem. X, L, space, Y of zero. So on extra large screens, I want to get rid of my space between my components. Do I have any space anyway? I don't think I do. But I'm going to keep it because maybe I did or maybe I had it in my design. All right, MX or all items center, bam, hit save. There we go, item center, pulled it into the middle at the end, okay? So look at this, bam, amazing stuff, All right? Uh, Real Medi says, thank you, Sonny. I was able to learn React in seven days from you. That is amazing, dude. Thank you for sharing that, All right? So we got the skills jumping in right now. Next thing I wanna do is H3 tag. I'm gonna say hover over, hover over for, hover over a skill or current proficiency, proficiency, snazzy, big words. If I even spell it right. No, I didn't spell it right. Oh, don't hate me. I, I probably have spelled it wrong. I don't know, proficiency. Okay, that is wrong. Proficient, no, that's definitely wrong. Proficiency, okay, I'm live, I don't care. It's fine. I'm, I'm focusing on coding. The, the, the grammar police can kill me for that. Absolute position this. And this one's gonna be, it's basically the same thing, but the track is gonna be three pixels instead of 20. And I'm going to change the absolute positioning a bit lower, right? So there you go. And it's also throwing our absolute. Bam. Whew, look at the tracking. It's so clean. It's so clean. Um, let's go. All right. So at this point, we've got a, I'm going to have a div. And this is actually going to follow a grid pattern now. Now I'm going to show you something cool with this, right? What I've actually done here is I've made it so that way, when we go down into this section, it actually animates half of the skills left, half of the skills right. So look at this. Half left, half right, right? There's a bit of a weird glitch there, but yeah, the overall feeling is correct, right? It'll be half left, half right. If I do skills and I refresh, we should see that half left, half right. Look at that. It's got a nice kind of snap in, right? Which is really cool. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do something like this now. So we're going to have a div. And then inside of here, we're going to have all of our sort of skills being rendered out, okay? And I'm going to show you how we'll do that kind of cool little trick later on. But to begin with, we're just going to say skill, right? So we're going to render a skill component in there, and we're going to have a grid. And that column is going to be a grid column of four uh, rows, as you can see there. And we're not going to actually change that. I want it to stay at that gap of five between all of them, okay? So this is looking good. Uh, Real Medi says, not only that I built an app while learning in seven days, I already got a job offer for 30K thousand US dollars as an investment. Jay screenshot that amazing stuff, dude. Thank you so much for sharing it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and create the skill component. So skill.tsx, uh, TypeScript, RFCE, bam. Don't stop learning gets best learning, but free quality to us. Thank you so much, Papicho. Your energy is incredible as always. We appreciate you, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in and import it like so, okay? So now you can see we've got skill, skill, skill. Let's go back down. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Pop these in down like that. And uh, I'm just going to pop in chunk of them like that, right? There we go. Let's just do more. You can see like a bit more of a demo. There we go. That's cool. Okay. So at this point, now what I'm going to do is we've got this in play. That's looking fine. I'm going to firstly animate the div here. So in this case, we've got our initial or that kind of good stuff, the transition while in view. So when, it, when I scroll down, it will show as opposed to just animate. So now if I was to refresh this, you see how it nicely kind of gradually comes in. It looks very clean, right? Nearly at 1,100 likes. Thank you so much, guys. If you're watching the replay of this, make sure you subscribe, bell notification, all that good stuff, and join us at Zero to Full Stack Hero if you want to take it a step further, right? Let's go forward. Okay, so, um, da, da, da. okay. So jumping into our skill, let's actually start with this, right? So for the skill, skill's actually kind of fairly straightforward, right? These are actually going to be motion divs, uh, motion images, sorry. 
Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do the appropriate thing. So Renato says, I love your courses, Sonny. I'm just doing the UPS course at the moment. I'll be going on with this one very soon. Keep up the great work. Dude, it's perfect because you can do the UPS loan. Then you can add it to your portfolio and bam, you can start getting a job. That's cool, man. Or it will help you get a job, right? So uh, a lot of our students have had success in that, right? So motion.div, right? So that's looking pretty. Oh, no, sorry. Motion.image. Okay. And this image right now, what I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually just copy, uh, let's just do like the Firebase one for now. And also guys, notice how, look what's happening here. Ooh, look at that, nice. Jay, can you send me a logo just like that, please, the URL? I just need the, the JPEG logo, thank you. And I can use it. So Jay's gonna send me that and then I can go ahead and get the source for this. Um, but in the meantime, for this div, I'm gonna have a special hover effect. So in order to achieve this kind of effect here, I'm going to have something like the following. I'm going to say, when I hover over this entire group, it should show, it will basically be able to, I can do certain things. I can say group hover. So when I hover over something, it will go ahead and do so the following behavior. So in this case, group, we set the parent to group. I'm going to make it relative because we're going to have some absolutely positioned things inside. Flex, and I'm going to say cursor pointer like so. So Jay is working on sending me that. In the meantime, I'm going to set up my transitions. So remember I said some of them slide in from the left, some of them slide in from the right. Well, in that case, what I can actually do is I can pass in a prop. Now I'm going to pass in something called direction left, right? And it's an optional prop and it's going to be a Boolean prop. So now we're starting to do some TypeScript. So I'm going to say that this is an optional value that you may pass in, right? Now if you did pass it in, I'm going to depict on which direction I should initially uh, fly in from on the x-axis. So you can see here, initial. If your direction left, then come in from the left, otherwise come in from the all right the next thing is the transition and a while in view so i'm going to go ahead and pop those in as well just like so now the opacity we didn't actually change in this case the opacity here i'm going to say initially was a zero in one second it will go from zero to one and it'll change from x outside to inside jay has now sent me a sanity logo awesome stuff because we will be popping in sanity very shortly so let's go ahead and pop in the source bam Right, we've got our source. And again, I will be using dynamic values very shortly from that. That's good, Jay. That's enough to do now. Perfect. Okay. Um, in fact, as you know, we can use that one as well. Okay. So I will use that, the second one as well. Nice. So we've got this one looking pretty good. So our skills are all about sanity today, right? We're going to be doing loads of sanity cool stuff. So we're going to go ahead and pop in a class name and let's go ahead and start this out. So rounded four. I'm going to give this a border. The border should be gray of 500. Border gray of 500. I want it to be an object cover and I want it to be a height and width of 42. So width of, uh, no, 24, sorry. Height and width of 24. So width and height of 24. Um, on a large screen, they should get a little bit bigger, but not massive. So I'm going to go ahead and do a height and width on extra large screens above of 32. Okay, so already looking very clean, right? Then I'm going to say filter. Now this is a special effect, right? Um, that's all good, Jay. I've already got enough now. So we've got this. So group hover. I'm going to say we've got the filter and I'm going to say grayscale. So when I hover over this, I want it to become a grayscale effect. So when I hover over the group, the entire group, which includes the parent that we assigned group to, right? So uh, group hover and I'm going to go ahead and say grayscale, grayscale. Okay, now look at this, guys. You see when I hover over it, it applies a filter on top of it, right? So hover like so. Now I've got, I'm going to say, um, yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. I'm going to say tra transition duration 300. And yes, I could make it feel what I've said. Ease in, out, ease in, out. There we go. So I wanted to ease in and ease out. So there you go. That's pretty nice, right? So as we do it, as I hover over it, and look, you see, we're getting there. We're getting closer to what the end outcome is. Now, how do I get that effect that I've got in my one? Right, so I've got a div inside my one. And what I'm actually doing here is going ahead and saying, I've got another div with a P tag inside of that. And in the P tag, I'm going to have a certain level of progress, like 100%, for example, right? So I'm going to be 100% in sanity right now. But they were going to eventually pull these in from uh, the back end. So you see right now, this is how we do it, right? So you're going to see step by step how we layer this up, right? So first things first, let's just make that look a little bit pretty. Let's do text 3XL. Let's go ahead and do item, uh, font bold, sorry, font bold, text black, and then let's do opacity 100, right? Because you can change it afterwards if you want. I'm actually gonna, probably gonna keep that the same though, right? The div here, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say flex, items center, justify center, and I'm gonna say height should be four, right? Now notice how it's in the center of its own div, but it's not over my existing one. The way we do that is we actually go ahead and say absolute over here, but with the parent being relative, 
bam, it sits on top of it, right? So now what I can start doing is I can start playing around with some cool stuff. I can say opacity is zero to hide it. Now, when I hover over the group, so the parent, what I want to do is I want to change the opacity to an 80 value, right? So 80. Then what I want to do is apply a transition so it's not just instant. I want to make the duration of that 300 milliseconds. I'm going to do ease in, ease out. You can do ease out as well, so that way it snaps in but eases out. I'm going to also change the group hover. So group hover, when I group hover, I want a background to become white. But it's not just a white, remember, it'll be opacity of 80, right? I'm going to make the height and width the same as the background. So that way it's a full circle that fits the same. So width and 24, which means that I need to also make it on the extra large screens change as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And let's say rounded for, right? And I'm going to do a Z index of zero for this. Right? So let's go ahead and save it and bam, just like that, we get a beautiful looking screen. Right. Now, I did mess up the MD because that one I didn't change here. So if you want to do that, you can actually go ahead and apply it there as well. And you can get the same effect. You just need to make sure that it's at the same breakpoint as the circle that you're doing. But right now, you guys can see that just like that, we have a beautiful looking effect. And I hope that helps you because that actually layering effect, that understanding of knowing how to do that comes in clutch later on when you start doing more kind of cool stuff. So that's a pretty cool way of doing it. Jay's getting compliments. Someone said he's handsome. Hey, Jay, go on, man. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to timestamp that. I'm going to write Jay handsome bit, right? <laughs> it gets cooled out. And also 1.1K likes. Oh my God, man. This is going nuts today. All right, so that's looking great, right? That's actually looking amazing right now. The next step is projects, right? And then we're going to eventually hook up the Sanity ECMS backend, right? So projects is the final piece before we hop over to our um, nice, beautiful Sanity platform, okay? So we're going to have the um, project section here. So let's go ahead and put that in. So projects, oops, projects, like so, okay? Now this one, I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to go here. I'm going to pop it in like so, projects.tsx, bam, RFCE, right? Oh, actually TypeScript. RFCE. Bam. There we go. Okay. So very good so far. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and import it into here. We're also going to go ahead and give this the appropriate ID. So in this case, it's going to be projects, projects, uh, class name is going to be snap start. Okay. And we should see it down there. And again, remember the rule of thumb is you give it a height of screen. So that way you can snap to it. All right. Bam. Oh, you can snap to it. Nice. All right. So at this point, um, quick little war break. Wow, <laughs> my, my mouth is like drying out. Okay, uh, also, madness, 1.1K likes. Thank you guys, incredible, incredible stuff. Loads of people saying, we want more Jay in the scene. Oh, hell yeah, I'm bringing Jay in now. Jay, you heard it uh, here first. Everyone wants you on. There you go, Jay's gonna code. <laughs> so uh, at this point, we got the uh, the projects screen up. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the H3 that we typically do. So this is gonna say projects. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same styling that we've been doing before for that one. So I'm gonna pop it in like so. Right, it's the absolute positioning on it. So in that case, you can see right now, but you see how if I don't add relative to the parent, it's not gonna be relative. It's gonna be relative to the entire screen, which is a no-no. Whereas now it's gonna be relative to its parent. So that's something you should always remember when you're doing this, right? It's gonna be a flex box. We're gonna say overflow hidden on this. We're gonna say flex column. And then we're going to say the text should be left. Oops, left, ooh, left. And uh, on the medium screen, flex row. Max width is going to be four on this one. We're going to do a height of screen. I've already done that. And uh, justify the stuff evenly. MX auto. And items should be centrally aligned with a Z value of zero. Man, there you go. Looking great. Okay. Next step is we're going to go ahead and pop this in. So this is kind of cool stuff, right? So um, what I firstly want to do is show you how to do a cool little back background line, right? So that's a really cool little thing. I actually, I'm very, actually, I'm overly proud of that, right? So basically I'm going to make a, a little div, right? As I've shown you before, you can go ahead and do this. So at this point, you can go ahead and see this. I've got class name. I'm going to say width of four, right? Width of four, absolute. And then I'm going to go ahead and say top 30%, right? 30%. Oops, eight percent. All right, so I'm kind of messing around with these values. BG of uh, the puppet found color, but a 10% opacity, length a left of zero value and a height of 500. So background, height of 500 and a width of, I think the width we done for, yeah. So there you go. So you can see now 
Now that's just a straight up line, right? Now the cool part is, is when you play with Tailwind's skew and rotations and stuff like that. So in this case, I'm gonna do minus skew Y on the Y axis of 12. And as you can see, bam, I get a skew. And it goes from length to length, look at that. Can never forget Sunny teaching even when the key I was stuck. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. Look at that. Look how clean that is, right? It's so nice because look, it's just an extra little design thing. I thought it looked really sleek, right? You can go nuts with this. My goal is to show you what is capable with the tech. You can run with it and go far, right? So at this point, we are doing awesome, right? The next thing I want to do is start putting in the projects, right? Or as the Australians say, the projects. Right? So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and pop in the div and inside of this div. Oops, God, what the heck is that? Let's pop in a div and I'm going to have a motion div inside of that, which we'll customize afterwards. And then actually, no, I'm going to have here. I'm going to have all the projects, right? So this is going to be each of the projects. So this will actually be um, each of the projects being mapped out. It's going to be each of the projects being mapped out. So firstly, let's prepare ourselves for that. So. The overall standing outside one is going to be a relative width for it's going to be a flex box. It's going to be an overflow X of scroll. So that way we can kind of scroll across it. So scroll and I'm showing you what I'm doing. I'm preparing the container for this, right? So I'm preparing the container for that overflow X scroll. Um, I'm also going to be doing a overflow Y of hidden. I don't want to show the Y accent uh, axes oh. uh, Y hidden snap on the X axis. Yes, snap should be mandatory. I just want to force you to basically snap between it. Z index of 20. I want to come in front of the layering, right? And then the scroll bar, I will decide afterwards, okay? So there you go. We're going to basically be building in that. So you see how there's a layer effect here. The background is layered behind, right? So cool stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and map through the projects. Now, what I want you to do here so that you can test it is essentially, I want you to go ahead and create just a dummy array of projects. So here I'm going to say projects equals... I'm just going to say an array of like one, two, three, four, five. It really doesn't matter here. Yeah? The whole point is that you can just test it as you render it out. So I'm going to say projects dot map for every single project. I'm going to render out the following. Okay. And inside of here, I'm going to have a div and inside that div, I'm going to have an image, All right? So that's the first thing is there going to be that image. So I'm going to take this one as an example. Okay. So we've just made this image. You can feel free to put whatever the hell you want. And then after that image, we're going to have a div with H4 h4 inside of it and that's going to essentially be the um case studies so the projects we're going to say that uh case study one of three um let's just say ups clone right so for example so let's go ahead and hit save and now you can see we can start seeing these flying in right we're going to eventually build this out so it's perfect okay so this one i'm going to say the width of each one should be the width of the screen right and then we're going to say that the flex shrink should be zero that's the reason why it's not actually showing that size so flex shrink of zero now it forces it to be that and you see it's not snapping yet because we have not said what the snap behavior should be if i do snap center now bam it snaps to the center of that element so i hope you're learning a lot with this if you are smash the thumbs up button we're almost at 1.2k likes and the pace today is incredible right so snap center looking very very good and we're going to go ahead and say with screen flex shrink zero we're going to say flex it's going to be a flex column view so there we go looking great and then we're going to say space between the y components of five uh items should be in the center i'm also going to justify everything in the center so justify in the center um da -da -da, snap center we were padding a 20 right now to give it a bit of breathing room it's way too close to the end my and on, on the medium screens and above padding should get greater and the height of screen is what I want to do as well, because I want it to take up the full height of the screen. You see that? Nice. So there you go, guys. Look at that. That looks really good so far. Now, you see it says case study one, case study one, case study one. Well, to fix that, it's very simple. You simply get the index as you loop through. And instead of the this, you say case study one i plus one of uh, projects.length. So in this case, projects.length. And there you go, projects. Case study one of five, da, 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 and so forth, yeah? I'll go all the way out. I did I plus one because counting starts at zero in coding and we don't want to show zero, right? Okay, this is looking so good. Right, so, so good right now. So at this point, I want to sort of customize it a little bit more. So I want to have it as this is the title, but this is going to be like an underlined bit. So span, let's span this out right now. And I want to do case study. And I'm going to get all the way up into the point of the colons. I'm going to include all of this, bam. 
and I'm going to go ahead and do a class. And I'm to, here I'm going to say uh, underline. Decoration is going to be a custom color with a 50% opacity. So a little shorthand trick here is we say boom. And now you can see there's a very nice little subtle touch on it. For the H4, I'm going to do text 4XL. Um, text 4XL. Awesome. And font should be semi-bold. Nice. And then we're going to say text should be center like so. All right. Good stuff. Look at this, guys. Looking amazing so far. And if you're wondering on a computer, yes, you can scroll it at the bottom right there. Right. So you don't have to worry about not being able to scroll at any point. You will be able to scroll. I had that feedback once, so I thought I'd fix that in a lot of the builds. So H4. Last name is going to go and say space between the Y components of 10. Padding X of 0. Hit save. Um, medium values, padding X of 10. And we're also going to say max width of this entire container is 6XL. Okay. To be fair, I don't know if we actually needed that. Um, yeah, we didn't. I had that before. Okay. But feel free. Go crazy. I, no, no. I do need that because I'm actually putting in a P tag afterwards. Yeah. Project summary. So for this one, I've already done the project summary somewhere else. Um, but I'm actually just going to copy this for now. So we have some kind of dummy text. Okay. So boom is even though it's not about Netflix, I'm just putting it. Aggie, Aggie Keegan says learning a lot right now. Thank you, dude. All I would like is you to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe if you haven't already. That is it. But enjoy the content, dude. Text large text should be center and MD text should be left. There we go. So on small screens, it should be center. Once we break the medium point, it should become left aligned. And look at that already, bam. Because the width of screen is the snapping point. Look at that, it's just so clean. Like what the hell, man? It's unfair how clean that is. <laughs> so that's looking good, all right? So at this point, we are gonna change it to a motion div. Now, I just wanna mention, we did actually cover a lot of frame of motion inside of Zero to Full Stack Hero way before I brought it on YouTube. So if you ever do wanna take things further, kind of develop your skill set at a pace that's faster than what I'm doing on YouTube right now, feel free to hop into Zero to Full Stack Hero, our course and community. Link is in the description. While we're here, might as well let you know about it. But yeah, feel free. Our students love it. And there's actually some members inside of the chat right now. So feel free to ask them questions, All right? So um, there you go. We got the project looking good. And uh, that's really nice. Einstein says, yeah, Zero to Full Stack Hero. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Uh, okay, so we're gonna change the div here. To be a motion div so first things first let's import it from the top like so okay so motion at the top and i'm going to go ahead and say this one should be motion.div and i'm going to actually do something very simple straightforward the same as what we previously did just a simple opacity in okay that's going to be for the surrounding div. now when every single item flies in i actually want the uh image to basically animate downwards right so this image i'm going to make a motion dot image and i'm going to go ahead and apply the following now yes we will be giving keys to our mapped objects i know someone must be going crazy in the replay or whatever but we're going to go ahead and do the following animation so we're starting a y minus 300 so it'll start from way above it'll come down to this value and we're also going to do opacity of zero to an opacity of one duration 1.2 seconds and once it's done i don't want to keep repeating it so that's it so you see that that bam really nice really nice really clean and you see how it when it's done once it doesn't do it again so i mean that is clean that is damn clean i don't care what anyone says that is actually really beautiful look at that it, it, it reason why it went out is because the view went out and then it animated back in which triggered off this again right so the parent kind of did it right so that's awesome so far I think what we should do while we're here is finally push past that kind of final hurdle of the contact page and then we can hook up our sanity and we can connect all the missing pieces, replace all the code from our dynamic data on the back end and then we can get moving on that front. So final step here before we touch sanity, we have the contact me page. So section, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we've got the section and this is going to be the contact me section. So we're going to go ahead and create a contact me component. So contact me like so. I'm going to go over here into my components. I'm going to do a contact me.tsx like so. And I'm going to go and say TypeScript uh, React Functional React Functional Component React oh, RFCE RFC. There you go. Bam. Okay. Looks good. All right. So um, at this point, I'm going to hit save. Go back to my index. And then I'm going to import this, bam. I'm going to go here and say ID should be uh, the contact. 
Um, this is going to be snap start as well. So snap start. Boom. Looks good. And then we're going to go ahead and say, um, that's fine. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do the phone. So you see it's there down there. Um, I'm going to give this a height of screen. So height of screen. So that way it can snap towards it. Boom. There you go. Awesome. Awesome appearance. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and actually build out this one. So the div is going to be the following. So we're actually going to be building out this right now, right? So first things first, let's put that H3 back in. I'm just going to pop it straight in because you've seen me do it a bunch of times now. Um, so that H3 resembles the contact. And then for the top point, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing previously. A very similar layout. Uh, flex column is what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to say the text should be central, except on medium screens where the text becomes left aligned. Right. And then we're going to say medium screens flex should become in a row. Um, max width of 7XL, uh, padding X of 10, height of screen. We've done already. Uh, justify everything evenly. MX auto to make sure that we're centered. And then I'm going to say items in the center. Um, there we go. Okay. Looking good. Oh, Einstein. I'm uh, sorry for that. Um, <laughs> we don't, we just don't mention things on the channel. Um, Right, so we've got the contact. There we go. And then at this point, we've got a div. And inside of this div, I'm going to have H4. And it's basically going to say, I have just what you, I have got just what you need. Right, so I've got something like sort of some quirky stuff that I'm saying right here. Right, so I've got just what you need. I'm actually going to span something in. So I've shown you this before. So what I'm actually going to do in the essence of time is I'm going to go ahead and pop this down and I'm just going to pop the block in. Feel free to pause the video when we do this. But I'm basically doing the span trick that we did earlier. I've got just what you need. Let's talk. Right, so the H4 here, I'm going to go ahead and say text it should be 4XL. And then I'm going to say font should be semi bold. And I'm going to go ahead and say text should be on the center. Okay, really nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. For the div here, I'm going to go ahead and say the flex. And it should be a flex column. Flex column. And then it should say space Y of 10. There we go. And that's because we're going to have more children component here as well. So next thing up, I've got the div. And inside of this div, I'm going to have different icons. Now, I'm going to be using hero icons today. So we are going to be installing hero icons and using them as needed. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and install hero icons into our app. So first things first, heroicons.com. There is a new version of hero icons. We're going to go over to the documentation. I'll show you how to install it. But it's amazing. And it works perfectly with Tailwind CSS. So what I want you to do is go ahead, copy this. I'm doing yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and do the following. Come on, J, pull it up. Yarn, add, hero icons, react. And I'm going to have a quick water break like you should if you're watching me right now. Amazing pace. We're going to be, we're pretty on time for this. Make sure you smash that like button. 1.2K likes is inbound. All right, let's do this. Okay. So we've got the div popping in right here. Uh, I completely lost what I was talking about. Um, Whoa, I completely lost what I was talking about. Okay, so the H4 is um, well, yeah, the hero icons. That's it. So we installed hero icons. I went super blank there. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and import a bunch of the icons from um, our dire required directory. Okay, now what I want to show you is if you ever need to search for them, you can go ahead and type in something like user and then you can see here user, 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 so forth. So what you can actually do that is use that as reference to how I found the icons in the first place and then you import them like so. Okay, so in that case, we've got the div and then I'm going to go ahead and say that we've got the phone icon. So I'm going to show you firstly how we will do it for one. For phone icon. And the P tag here is going to be the so far. You know what? This should be wrapped in a div. I'm going to go ahead and pull that into a div. This div is actually going to be flex items in the center. Center. I'm going to hit save. I'm actually going to show you this so you can see what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this on the side left here. Flex item center space between the X components of five. So it should have a little bit of a space. This P tag, I'm going to go ahead and say the phone number. So plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's uh, totally my number, as you can tell. All right. So there we go. We got a number there. And then I'm going to basically replicate this a few times, right? So we've got justify center is what I needed as well. Justify center. There we go. And then for this, I'm going to go ahead and customize it. So class name, I'm going to go ahead and give it a, the a Papa fam color, height and width of seven. I'm going to animate it as well. So animate posts. So you can see it will have this nice little animation of color, right? 
The same thing goes for this. I'm going to say text is going to be 2XL. Right now, essentially what I've done here is the same thing three times, but I've done it for different icons. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the address. So down here, I'm going to have it for the address. Oh, oops, I've got the address. Uh, that's eventually when we finish things off. One, two, dev, uh, lane. OK, so let's go to our contact page. Here we go, contact. Right, And then let's go ahead and, and we can see that. Now I'm going to have the same thing for the final one. Let's get rid of that. Except this one is going to be for the envelope icon. Right now for the envelope icon, I want to do something different. I want to actually, this one's going to eventually say like email me. And the whole point of this is that you can click it and it will mail to you the person's email. Right. So in this case, if you want to reach us out, it's popperat.team at gmail.com. Right. So that's what we're going to do just for a placeholder right now. And uh, what we are going to say is that for this overall div, we should style it out and put things spaced out. So space Y of 10, right? Nice. Fabricio says, Sonny, you're the best. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you, man. Um, I see you, Savvy Programmer. <laughs> I see you. All right. So in this case, we've got the div here. Um, okay. So underneath that, I'm going to have a form. Okay. So I'm going to have the form. Now, look at that. That form just adds like it's a very clean touch once you have that in. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we're going to have a form and this is where you're going to learn about React Hooks form if you haven't already used that in the past, right? So nearly at 1.2K likes, absolutely smash it. Damn, why that horizontal scroll bar? Don't worry, dude. I'm actually going to replace it with a very beautiful one shortly. And that right now is actually because of an animation over here somewhere that hasn't kicked in. Uh, that's it. Yeah. So I will show you how to fix that afterwards. You just have to set an overflow hidden on the parent. Um, that's what we should have done somewhere. Okay. So... At this point, we're going to put a form and uh, div, div, div form, yeah. And then we're going to get rid of this, get rid of that. And inside of our form, we're going to have a div. First div is going to have two inputs, input times two. And then we're going to have another uh, input, a text area. So we're going to have an input, a text area, and we're going to have a button. Okay. Now this, I don't care about any of this. So let's get rid of that for now. Get rid of that for now. Get rid of that for now. Okay. So the text area is actually a self-closed component. That's fine. The button will say submit. Hit save. And there you go. I mean, that looks awful, right? But we'll fix it up so it looks really nice. So first things first, on that form, we're going to make it flex. It's going to be a flex column. It's going to be space between the Y components of two. And it's going to be W fit to be absolutely just what we need it as. And margin X of auto. Hit save. Bam. Everything's in line. That's actually two forms right there, right? Rajpreet saying, yo, what is up? We've got a Papa Fan member in the house. If anyone else wants to become Papa Fan member, you see how it pops out. And I can see you guys straight away. Then hit the join button. But welcome, dude, to the stream. Here I'm going to say uh, class name equals flex space X of two. Right, bam. And there you go. That gives it a little bit of breathing room. Uh, now here, what I want to do is I want to give it a placeholder, a name, and a contact input. It's going to be a custom utility class that I want to give these things. So I'm going to go ahead and create a multi cursor here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to say class name equals contact input. And what I'm going to do is go over to my globals. Now inside of globals, it's worth doing it here because we're going to have a repeating class. So I'm going to say contact input at apply. And as I hit save now, you'll see it being taken into effect. Outline none gets rid of this annoying blue border that's there. So now you can see there's no blue border. Okay. Then we're going to say background should be a value of slate 400 and a 10% opacity, right? So very subtle background rounded the border around the borders a bit. We're going to say border should be on the bottom. Um, oops, what have I done here? Border should be on the bottom. My bad. Okay. And um, padding X, I'm going to give it a slight dark gray as well. So padding X, padding Y, and there you go. So slightly bit of padding on the X and Y axis, a little bit more on the X than on the Y. Uh, we've given it a border color. Text should be gray, 500 by default. And then a placeholder value should be gray by 500. Transition everything. So I'm going to go ahead and apply a transition to all of the things here. So there we go. Sorry, guys, one second. So now if I type in here, it's a bit gray. But what I want to do is when you're focused, is I want to change the color of the text and the color of the border. All right. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So focus changes the color of the text and border. So I've done 40% opacity. So now you can see, look, oh, I do like hello world, sunny. 
blah 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 but now you can see look i get this nice kind of animated effect as well and it highlights the text nice right and when we hover over it i also want to change the color as well right so i agree with you einstein there's rounded corners make everything look nice right so that looks really clean so far like as we highlight over it, you see how the underline changed but the text didn't change until i clicked it and i focused right so um there you go really really nice Sonny, can you fix the horizontal scroll bar with the overflow hidden not if you've got an animation and it pops out for a second so that's why you'd want to overflow hide it right so at this point that's pretty cool okay um let's go back to our button and our button we're going to have the following style so i'm just going to pop this in for the sake of time so i'm going to go here class name and here we've got background color padding rounded corners text black font bold and text large right so very simple stuff there now the only thing we're missing here is placeholders right placeholders and then we need to connect it to react hooks form so here i'm going to put in two placeholders um the first one being is going to be um name and the second one's going to be email so name this one is going to be email so email yeah let me know if anyone's coding along right now because their retention is nuts you are actually crazy good today at coding along so it's been incredible seeing this uh, name email as you can see it's popped in we're also going to have placeholder here for subject so the subject line and then we're also going to go ahead and have a message as such oh god oops sorry placeholder is going to be a message there we go okay and the button here i want it to be a type of submit because we're inside a form so it's going to submit okay so as you can see look and then i think i like about this is as you can go ahead and and pull that apart and stuff like that and animations are going to kick in because we've got to animate everything yeah so really really nice so far now how the hell do i submit this form so if i click it right now default behavior is to refresh right that's happening because we're here so i'm gonna get rid of that okay so how the hell do i do that All right so first things first is we need to just double check yeah that's good um let's go ahead and actually set up a react hooks form All right in oh see thank you thank you thank you done a good little spot there glenn smith type should have been email yes you're right type should have been email here yeah. so if you click type email now that would actually be an email form it would help you validate that form in the correct way so there you go default validation thank you All right um so i want to ask how do you plan designing a web page with us so i will mention it more in zero to full stack hero but i use behance and a dribble to go ahead and get my inspiration yeah behance and dribble amazing websites for ui ux okay so that's pretty good right now now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up a react hooks form so react hooks form i'll show you so heading over here we can go ahead and it's basically a really good uh, efficient library to use for when you're setting things up so we're going to click on typescript for the typescript demo we're going to install the dependency like so so i'm going to go ahead and grab this pop this in command j and i'm going to go ahead and go to my bottom yarn add boom right hook form right really really good stuff 1.2k likes let's go that is absolutely amazing thank you guys for today so far your energy has been incredible wow and we are doing very well on the timings so that is now installed now what we need to do is go ahead and set up the following so you can use this as your base right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy these two lines this is our basically initialization of the connecting the state from react to its form to our elements on the page so first thing i want to do is go ahead and pull that in Oops, sorry i need to go ahead and pull type submit there we go uh, we've got our, we're going to create some custom types so i'll show you what we're going to use there and we're going to import the following as well okay so the inputs are essentially what types of fields are we going to expect so it's not this example example we're expecting this name string email string subject string message string okay so at that point is looking really good raj Prisian says damn sunny what a nice boat thank you so much dude i appreciate you All right so at this point we have our inputs coming in so what i can now do is inputs are being popped in here now we don't need the watch right now you we're not going to use errors i've done that before in a build we're not actually going to do that right now uh, handle submit is what we're actually going to be using and register so as you can see this is basically going to give us two handlers which are going to help us set up our form and then the on submit is essentially going to say when we submit that form what should we do with the form data that gets submitted right so here what we can actually rename this to is form data okay so that's what's actually going to happen now how the hell do we actually connect this to our form so we go down to our form and what you want to do here is essentially just go ahead and say on submit and we're going to say on submit handle submit 
and you pass in our on submit function at the top right so if we go to the top ha uh, handle submit is what they gave us and on submit is our own handler okay so that's how you go ahead and do it so that's literally done and then all we need to do is connect each of the input fields to the following thing so now to do that all you got to do is put your curly braces dot 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 means spread and we're going to spread a register and we just pop in the name of the field that we want to basically call it so i'm going to copy this now this one's going to be name this one's going to be email and you can see how it's actually calling me out on it you see how it already knows which one's which so if i try to do something wrong it will call me out on it and say no you need to do email that's the power of typescript All right so let's do that and then i'm going to go ahead and pop this in so we've got this and i'm going to do subject and this one's going to be message Okay, hit save. Now you can see you get a nice little prettier working. It's magic. And then I can go ahead and test this out. So let's go back over to our app and let's go ahead and see what's going on it. So command uh, open inspector and then let's clear this out and let's just type in sunny, sunny test at gmail.com subject. Woohoo. Okay, let's just type in I got another dope build and say build my app, bruh. Right, and let's click enter. And as you can see, it got rid of the default behavior, which was to go ahead and refresh the page. And instead it gave us this information in that form data object. So then we can go ahead and use that in whatever we needed to do, right? So what I've done here is I'm not gonna go ahead and implement a backend server, send an email, that kind of stuff. Instead, it's gonna go ahead and open up your mail client for whoever's sending it with pre-filled uh, with pre-filled spots, basically, right? So you can go ahead and pre-fill information. So that's what we're gonna do in this build, but you can feel free to change it up however you want, right? It really doesn't, it's up to you, right? So at this point, the way we do it is we go to our on submit function, Gonna pop a block here around this. Form data has all of our appropriate data in. So now you can see if I do form data dot, you see I get all of this fields. That says power of TypeScript. And the way we basically redirect someone to send an email from their client is we say window dot location dot href. And then here we go ahead. Email JS is a good way to send emails. Yes, you're right. We're gonna do back ticks here. I'm just gonna do it very simple because this is not the focus of today's video. But we're essentially gonna have the email of the user, right? So the one that they put in. So this is actually gonna be the person who's logged in. So right now I'm just gonna put popreact.team. Not, not the person who logged in, sorry. This is gonna be the person's page who it is. So it's gonna be this subject. Now this is gonna come from the form data. Okay, so this is going to be the, from the form data and the body is going to be from the form data message. And um, rather than just the body being like this, I'm going to actually going to say hi. Oops, I'm going to say hi. My name is um, data.name. So we could say form data. Sorry, guys, one second. Hi, my name is form data dot uh, name and um and then a message okay cool and um and then you can even in brackets afterwards put the email address i mean you're going to be sending it from the email address i guess but still you could just put that in there if you really wanted so you could say form data dot email okay um or however you want to do it you can basically do that so the point is now if i was to do this and i was to go ahead and click on submit You'll see it opens up a mail client and um, let me go ahead and just move this out. Oops, I've actually popped something up there. Uh, let me go ahead and show you this. So yeah, it will pop out on the screen. It'll say dope build and so forth, right? So it'll say like an email address. This is some old one, doesn't work. I mean, it's only build my app bra. So that's basically like from your own email address, it will do that, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that now. So that's basically a, a templated email structure. You can feel free to go ahead and do that in a way that you want to, right? Um, so, so you can feel free to do that the way you need to, right? So, um, right, one second, guys. But, uh, all right. Yeah, so you can feel free to do that yourself, right? So if you want to go ahead and do that with a mail server, you can feel free to do that as well, okay? So at that point now, on the next point, what we're going to now do is we're going to go ahead and set up sanity, right? So first things first, actually, you know what? Okay, quick, quick, quick thing I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to quickly customize the uh, the scroll bars because right now they're ugly right here. <laughs> so at this point, first things first is I need to go ahead and hide 
the scroll bars for um yeah jay that's awesome uh index let's go ahead and do this i'm gonna go ahead and do uh so here there we go so what we say is here is we're gonna go ahead and hide our where is it gone da, da, da. overflow y scroll there we go overflow y scroll not x yeah and then i'm gonna say actually here overflow x scroll sorry hidden overflow x hidden there you go and now we can still scroll in inner containers but that overall one's gone right oops i actually messed that one up but there you go we've got this um that seems to have messed up what i've done there we go skills okay there we go nice okay so it all works right so next thing is we need to customize the look and feel of this so doing amazing so far guys i'm actually so proud of the papa fam for tuning in and literally the retention is unreal i've never seen this it's actually unreal um so thank you guys all right so at this point um what we're now going to do is i'm going to have the custom scrollers so basically you see how i've got custom scrollers here? i'll show you how we do it Right, so basically it's literally called uh, tailwind scroll i believe i'm just going to find it again so it's called tailwind scroll bar and i'll show you the installation process so you literally tailwind scroll bar uh first link on google tailwind scroll by npm you will see this right yarn add dash d or npm you can feel free to do whatever you want come on j install it as a developer dependency and then you go to your tailwind config and you plug it in right so head over to your tailwind config and inside of your plugins you pop it in Right now we have additional Tailwind CSS utility classes. So come on, J, close that. And now what we can do is we can go ahead and start taking over all the old ones that look like crap and basically make them look fresh. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So index.tsx. So first things first is the uh, parent one, right? So let's go and do that. So first thing I need to say scroll bar that allows me to get access to all of these ones. Then what I do is I say scroll bar and I can actually change the track color. So I'm gonna change the track color to gray 400, but at an opacity of 20%, right? Immediately, you can see that it's gone a different color. And then what I can do is I can change the thumb, right? So if I say scroll bar thumb, and I'm gonna change that to the Papa Firm color, but an 80% opacity. So let's go and do that. And now you can see the thumb has changed to a nice color. Look at the, like, it's nuts what it can do right that it can really have a nice impact on your your sort of overall look and feel of your app all right so really really nice subtle changes the next step is experience so let's do work experience let's go over here and let's go ahead and modify this one as we need to so i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing but for the div with the experience cards inside of so i've literally got the same thing scroll bar change the track colors change the thumb color and as you can see now we have a beautiful new styles right so really, really nice. The final one is the projects, right? So let's go ahead and go to our projects and let's go ahead and pop it on site. I'm pretty sure it's this one. I'm just gonna do a quick sanity check because we're coming up to sanity. Oh, uh, gonna go here and pop it in like so. And there you go, guys. Just like that, we have it there as well. Now for this one, if you wanted to make it thin, you can go ahead and do the following. You can actually go to your scroll bar, type in scroll bar, and you can put thin as well. And you can even get a thin version of it. So if you did want a thinner version because it's in the middle of the page, you could do that as well, right? So it's really up to you how you want to style it, but it really does look quite clean, right? So super, super clean design, UI, everything's looking awesome. And yeah, it's very impressive to a future employer. Now, the most anticipated part, the CMS, right? So now what we're actually gonna do is connect Sanity's content platform, which is incredible by the way, right? I'm gonna show you and make sure when you set this up, use the first link in the description. What we're now gonna do is set up a backend. We're gonna create a API endpoints for each different call that comes in. We're gonna pull the information from Sanity protected in a protective fashion with TypeScript to so make sure that we make no mistakes and then we're going to use that information on the screen so that way if you're ever using your if you want to update your uh, portfolio you don't have to go in and code everything manually you go to sanity change what you need to change publish the changes and voila it's working and it works the way we need it okay um so somebody's saying where do you get this inspiration for design it's called behance and dribble okay and with that said, we are literally about to crush 1.3k 
likes right absolutely amazing stuff guys you guys are gonna have beautiful portfolios at the end of this i promise you okay um also if you want to do that you get rid of that one and then that's it that replicates it awesome so that looks clean as hell guys right i'm really happy with that and also if, oh for this one yeah so i forgot to mention get in touch we need to make that actually a link so uh for the header uh we can actually make that a link i should have done that otherwise i'm gonna forget um so over here what we can do is for the this one what we do is we pop in a link a next.js link sorry and then we cut that out over the other side we pop it in and we simply say href is going to be to the contact point in the screen so contact contact save and then now if i go ahead and click it, it takes me to the contact there you go awesome stuff i also did have a little thumb at the bottom i'll show you how we can do that very easy to do um, and then you can actually have that throw you to the front end as well. Then we're going to jump onto Sanity's uh, amazing bit in a second. All right, so here we're going to have a link. Next JS link. All right, and oh god, damn it. Yep. And then what we've got here is we're going to have a footer, and it's always going to be appended. And inside there, we're going to have a div with an image. That image, in this case, I'm just going to have an imga for a rough logo that we have. Um, you can feel free to change this as you wish. The href here is going to take you to the top of the page. So in this case, it's going to take you to hero. Okay. And what I'm going to do here for this is it's going to be a footer. So it's going to be class sticky bottom five with this full cursor should be a pointer. Okay. And then we're going to say that the image should be have a bunch of styling and I want it to be grayscale. So in this case, I'm going to go here, type in class name width and height of 10 as you see how it's a tiny little image here, but when i hover over it it gets rid of the grayscale okay and then for the div here very simply we say flex item center so you can basically use this trick to center it and just to find the center and bam just like that as we scroll down now we have our little logo stuck on the page looking fresh All right there we go so everything's looking clean if i click it now i go back to the top so you can feel free to do that i actually didn't include that in the sanity um cms bar but we can you can feel free to customize it after i show you how to do this okay so ben carter says this is sick sunny keep up the good work thank you dude for being amazing as always let's jump on to the sanity cms part right so heading over to sanity.io forward slash sunny this is where everyone needs to be right now right now i want you to go ahead and pay attention to this second line so firstly you need to run this and install the sanity cli now before we go ahead and jump into things a little bit more i want to mention why sanity is an incredible uh sponsor of this channel and why i'm using them because i don't use just any old tech that comes my way but i want to mention why we're going to use them in the first place and honestly just quite frankly they're amazing at what they do they use a massive they support a massive amount of big businesses you can use it wherever you need content or wherever you need to basically be able to update it in a non-developer fashion so imagine you've got a team you don't need to basically have to tell them to Rechange all the hard coded values and then redeploy the app, right? You don't want to do that in a production environment. You need to have it so that anyone who's a non developer can come in, change, collab, add your stuff, right? So you've got this awesome way that you can go ahead, add products, add whatever you've decided in your schema. You can go ahead and do that. There's tons of APIs to go ahead and build on. You can feel free to have a look for yourself, right? And they've got real time collaboration, which is actually really, really cool. And if you get stuck, there's a great Slack environment, Discord environment, and they've also uh, been incredible incredible with helping us in our own slack community okay so they've been actually really really awesome so make sure you go ahead check them out first link in the description to get that double quota plan okay so this is the one that you need to do so i've already run this command so you do uh, you can do it if it doesn't work run sudo in front of it to install it as an admin but then we're going to go ahead and do sanity init coupon so this is where the magic happens so i want you to go ahead open up your terminal and type in the following okay so check this out right now give me two seconds guys two seconds all right so i'm gonna go ahead and say sanity init coupon sunny 2022 hit enter and now what you will see is coupon sunny 2022 validated also guys it supports the papa fam so thank you for that i appreciate you all and you get double the quota okay so at this point it says you're setting up a project looks like you already have a sanity account sweet if you didn't it would make you log in right so here i'm gonna give it a project name so i'm gonna say portfolio youtube youtube 2.02 uh, basically um build 
Okay, I'm giving it a, a long name. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter right now. And let's see how many people we can get signed up to Sunny, right? It helps us out and it's just an awesome platform. I really like pushing people to good tech because it's actually good tech. Um, the default uh, database configuration, yes, just hit enter, that's fine. And then you wanna leave it like this for now. Create output path. So I like to call this one Sanity, right? So I literally like to call, create another folder called Sanity. So I'm gonna do that, hit enter. Now, here you have a set of templates. Now you can start from blank. However, I would recommend just start from blog and I'll show you how you can redefine, rebuild things out as you need, right? So go ahead and hit blog and then we can go ahead and do it like so. This will set up a sort of template for you with a blog schema. So once that's done, it will install dependencies. Now remember, there is a separate folder now called Sanity inside of your domain or inside of your, uh, your like where you're working. So make sure that, that to remember to exclude the node modules because that's got its own set of node modules. So you also need to be careful now where you install your dependencies, right? Uh, Einstein says, hey, I hope you do a tutorial about coming on how to post on Sanity either on YouTube or Zero to Full Stack. Yes, dude, I definitely will. I think I did it in the, the Twitter build or one of the builds. I definitely did a uh, posting to section. But definitely check it. It's in Zero to Full Stack. Here. Right, so this is going to install and it's going to be done in just a second. Okay. So overall, incredible stuff right now, guys. We're actually going to be moving over to Sanity in just a sec. So... You can see now that it's already started to create the folder structure for us, get everything in place as we need and expect it. So looking at the schemas that it's created, you can see while it's installing the dependencies, we can jump into it. So you can see right now we've got post author category block content. So this is basically saying, what should the shape of my database be, right? So I'm going to save you a bunch of time here. I've actually pre-built all the schemas for us. So we can actually go ahead and, and save a bit of time there and do it. So I've split things up into page info. Page info is essentially going to represent the entire page information. So heading over to post, what I want you to do is basically go ahead and um, I'm going to show you how we can re basically change one of the ones that are currently there existing and then i'm going to just do it in a fast fashion for the rest of them so that way you can see what i'm doing so here we've got post i'm going to change this to page info and then we can click okay i'm going to change this to page info with a capital p right because it's the title and then we've got all the fields and this is sanity's documentation for what we essentially need to do so what i want you to do here firstly we're not going to be using preview so scroll down to preview get rid of the preview for now right we'll cover that in a separate video we're going to grab everything from the start of the end of the rate to the beginning of so that way we've got an empty fields Right, and I'm gonna go ahead and pop in each of the individual ones that I'm gonna show you. So in the, inside of our page info, we've got the name, and these are gonna represent each of the individual things on our page. So eventually, the name will represent, hi, my name's Sunny Sanga. So it'll be here, we set it inside of our Sanity CMS, right? We're gonna have an image, and we're gonna have a role. The role is gonna say software engineer. The hero image is gonna be the following. Then we're gonna have things like background information, the profile picture, and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in. Background information, profile picture, phone number, email, address, and socials, okay? So I'm gonna do these ones right here first. So I've got the, um, sorry guys, one second. We've got the profile picture, and then we're gonna have um, the following. So address and all of these ones here. So there you go, we've got profile picture, phone number, email, and address, right? So what I want you to now do is go ahead and pop in also the final one, which is socials. And this one will freak out and complain because we haven't actually done it correctly yet. Right, so socials. So these have all got data types, string, image, so forth. However, right, when we have socials, I've got a reference to a different type, which is social. So first thing I want you to do before you get ahead of yourself, go ahead and rename this file to page info, page info. Okay. And, and that way we hit save and go to schema. And where we had post previously, I'm going to replace all the instances of that with page info. Okay, so you can do it that way, right? That's the way that I basically was, I'm just showing you how I was doing it. I basically came in, messed around, played with it in that fashion, right? Eric Mill friends has just came here to say, Sonny, you are the one, the best teachers I had. You rock good vibes from Brazil. Eric, I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much, brother. 1.3K likes inbound very shortly, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna get rid of all of the others. So we're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna get rid of this. So I'm gonna make it very clean for you, okay? And, uh, and then I'm going to basically build it up as we need it. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually get the schema, category, block content, author, and I'm going to delete. 
Oh no, sorry, no, 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 not the schema. Okay, don't delete the schema. <laughs> okay, that's close. Delete those. All right. No. Okay, I, I deleted the wrong one. God damn it. Okay, delete those three. That's it. Yeah. Um, and now here, I want to basically copy and paste the page info, and I'm just going to keep creating different ones, right? So page info is one, experience is the next one. So I want you guys to just, you can feel free to pause the video and get here. I'm basically, I'm basically building out the back end of the database, right? So for experience, we're going to do something very similar, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the difference, right? So experience, experience, and these are the different fields. So job title, company image, company, date started, date ended, is currently working here because it's going to say present on the experience tab if you are, technology and that's going to reference skill as well and points is going to be an array of type string okay so that's going to be a different one we're also going to have a, another one which is going to be for project okay this is going to be for the individual projects so let's go ahead and rename that as well so i'm just going ahead and saying project JS and you guys can feel free to take a, a pause and have a look at this to copy it out as you feel fresh the code is also available in the public github repo so do not forget that right next thing you know we're going to have the skills so we're going to say skill.js and this is going to be how we're going to label out the back end for skills. So in this case, I'm going to do this one right here. So this is the layout that I've done for here. And what we've done is we actually added a validation in. So it has to be a minimum of zero or a maximum of 100. All right. Thank you, Ben. He says, I'm loving the consistent lately. I'm really trying. So I really appreciate that comment, dude. Thank you. Right. And the final one is we're going to have a social. OK, so here I'm actually going to have something called social. So let's go ahead and pop this in here. And you can see it's got a title and a URL, and that's going to resemble all of the different socials that are going to show up in the header of our app. OK, so that should be everything. Now, if we go to our schema, what we should see. Um, thank you, Ben. He goes, it's crazy how the value doesn't drop with quantity. It takes a lot of work. I ain't going to lie, but we do it for you guys. So thank you so much. All right. So here, what we're going to do is once we're inside of our schema. Oh, I didn't save it. Oh, that's strange. All right, I'm going to go ahead and grab this and paste it in like so. OK, so I've got my page info there and that's weird. What the hell? OK, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pop in the phone. So I'm basically going to uh, list out all of the different um, schemas in here. And you see what we're doing? We're basically concatenating all of the different schemas that we've just created into one global schema. OK. So in that case, we're done with that bit, right? So now what we need to do is run our Sanity. So Sanity gives us two ways of viewing our CMS. Firstly, we can run it locally. Secondly, we can deploy our CMS platform online, but it's secure because you would have to log in with the Sanity account that you approve or that you created it with. So you can actually add several users to your backend as well. So that way they can log in and change things as well. So imagine you have content management creators, that kind of stuff, they can do that as well. Right. So here I'm going to go ahead and say yarn run. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> CD sanity. And we've installed the sanity CLI tools, as I showed you before. So now what we can do is we can type in sanity start. And let's see if we did all of our setup correctly. All right. So this is just should go ahead, set up on our local environment and we should be able to log in and do what we need to do. Let's actually go ahead and save these files as well, because I didn't save them. OK. It's compiling it and then it will go ahead and start it up on our server. So localhost 3333. Awesome. Let's go check it out. Localhost 3. And then you can see the Sanity Studio will load. And as you can see, nobody can just log into it. So we're actually going to go ahead and log in. So I'm going to log into Go with Google. So I'm clicking Google. I am now logging in. And then uh, I can see that I have now got errors in my schema. OK, so that's fine. We're going to go ahead and check it out. So. It says invalid type if uh, skill is already defined in the schema. Cool. Let's go figure out what the hell's going on. So unknown type social, social, social. So I probably haven't saved my things here, right? That's probably the issue here. So if I was to go ahead and check my skill, there we go. That's all good. Project and so forth. Let's go ahead and see this for ourselves. And then we've got project, page info, experience, Okay, so I just didn't save my files. That's all it was. Okay, so now I want to give you a little demonstration of the sanity backend, right? So this is where the magic really happens, right? So let's first check out page info. So if I go into page info and I click create document, so in this case, this is essentially going to be mapped to eventually to what I have over here, right? So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can go ahead and do this right now. So if we were to go ahead and pop it in right now, so imagine I said Sunny, Sanga, and then I was like software, engineer, software. 
engineer and so forth and then i went ahead and dropped in the email uh, sorry dropped in the image background information would be um as i scroll down here would be this kind of stuff and so forth so what i'm actually going to do now is i'm going to show you my deployed version and i'm going to basically streamline the process of doing this for you so the skills re re would resemble the different skills that we would have and so forth right so i'm actually going to basically save us a bit of time rather than import all of this again which you can definitely do you just click add and you start adding out this information and eventually i'll show you how we can go ahead and pop this through as well social would represent all of the social tags so this would be twitter and then it would be the url for your twitter account project would be your project title your summary different technologies that you used and notice how this would reference the old technologies inside of skill so in this case if i didn't have a skill i can even create a skill from here and reference it so it's a fully relational connected database okay so it's very, very powerful stuff. So at this point, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to load up my old Sanity Studio because I've actually already pre-filled this one. And I'll show you how we can work like so because this will save a bit of time as opposed to me adding it all in manually again. And I can actually show you how we do this, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one. I'm going to run it on my other machine and that will go ahead and launch it on localhost 3000, okay? So you want to have that running on the side as well, okay? So let's give that a second and that will go ahead and log in. So now I've got that loaded. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my local host. And I've actually gone ahead and done this before. And so JME went out and spent a lot of time filling this out. So if we look at page info now, you can see I've added in a bunch of pictures, a bunch of different things, right? So in this case, I've got a bunch of numbers, a bunch of this, that. it's not a real number, don't worry. Uh, skill is going to have all the different skills. So you can have Next.js, you can have your JavaScript. And we've also got progress. Remember, I had those different progress metrics. So I want you at this point to basically go ahead and input all of your data inside of here. Right. Same for experience. You can see we've got all of these ones. So, for example, if I click on CEO of the Papa Fam, you can see the company, the date started, the technologies used. You can see how it's linked and different points as to how and what uh, uh, and the basis of selling points for why you uh, think that's a good thing to put on your resume. Same thing for the socials. So, again, you can put on links, you can put on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube accounts and so forth. And it's going to go ahead and eventually pull those in like we need to. Same thing for the project. So with that bit done now what if i want to go ahead and deploy this right so what we can actually do is i can either use it on my local host or i can actually even deploy this and i can go ahead and do the following and say sanity deploy and if i do sanity deploy now this is actually going to deploy the one that hasn't got the information in but i'll show you just for reference you can go ahead and give it a studio name so i can go ahead and say something like portfolio portfolio youtube demo and I can hit enter. And what this will do right now is it will actually have essentially another copy of the studio online. So that way my team, for example, when I was building this, I deployed my Sanity Studio. Jay was filling in the information while I was coding it out the rest of the build. So you can see how you can actually work in a real time environment like this. Just remember your local host is always going to be up to date. Your Sanity Studio is going to be the one that's probably going to be behind if you add anything else. So you have to redeploy but you can actually have live collaboration between the two things, which is awesome, right? Right, so this is amazing right now. I can see everyone kind of going silent. 1.3K likes, this is nuts. We have 300 people still watching this video. This is nuts, right? So there you go. You can deploy, and as you can see, we can go ahead and reach over there. Now, as I mentioned before, it is secured. It's logged, like you see, I'm actually logged in right now, which is why I can come to it. And this is the one without the documents inside. But that is what it would be, how you can actually deploy. It's very simple. Now that would be forever up. So even in a production environment, you can go ahead and do that uh, as you need to okay so let's carry on so i've got my local host here that's working well for me what i now need to do is go ahead and what's awesome as well is you can go ahead and connect to that but i'll show you afterwards right so next steps are let's go to our front end and we need to now pull our information from our front end right so what we're going to do is essentially use something called the grok query language to go ahead and query the back end and get the information that we need right so in this case let's go ahead and do an example of this so they have a special querying language called the grok query language it's actually very simple once you know how to use it 
And in this case, for example, we have a type called social. So if you notice, there was a type called social here. And we know this because if we go to our social, let's go to our social right here. You remember the name of here, that's the type, right? So social. So if I try and query for everything that is of type social and I hit run, it's similar to GraphQL in the sense that it will return a bunch of documents back to me. Okay, so I've actually pre-populated these queries to help you out. And we're gonna go ahead and create API endpoints using Next.js's backend functionality create those endpoints and then we're going to communicate to our back end from our Next.js front end and then we're going to go ahead and, ha and go ahead and have a full stack integration right and then we're going to render it on the front end so lots of stuff coming in and it's all going to be on TypeScript it's all going to be protected everything's going to be awesome I promise you okay so let's carry on let's move strongly on so at this point what we can now do guys is we can go ahead and uh, if I close this out, let's just make our code a little bit neater. First thing I want you to do before you forget is I want you to go into your git ignore file and I want you to add in the following. I want you to add in sanity. So one second, let me just try to double check. I want you to add in sanity forward slash node modules, right? Anywhere, it doesn't matter. The reason being is because that way, if you refresh now, you see we get the correct number of source control changes. Otherwise it goes nuts and it thinks you're trying to uh, commit your node modules, which you're not. Definitely not, right? So at this point, what I'd like to showcase to you is if we go to our pages, you will see we have an API here. This is a full Node.js backend that we have running by default when we have a Next.js app. So if you notice, if I head over to localhost 3000, my app is there, right? But if I go to forward slash API, forward slash hello, you will see I have an actual endpoint running on the backend. Right. So this is all because we have this API and you see forward slash hello. So that's how in the Next.js page reading works also works for its API endpoints. So inside of API now, I'm going to create a bunch of different endpoints. And these are going to have all going to have the responsibility of connecting to my um, the responsibility of connecting to my sanity backend and then pulling in the information as needed. So first things first, we need to connect to sanity. So I'm going to use a library called next sanity, right? So let's go ahead and do that right now. So this is the sanity toolkit for Next.js, And I'm going to show you how we do that right now. So head over to installation and we need to do the following. So I'm going to do yarn install next sanity and a bunch of other useful helpers. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Command J. I'm going to make sure you're not in the wrong folder. So I need to CD up a level. So I'm at my main folder and then I install my dependencies because Sanity's folder also has dependencies of its own. Okay. Amazing stuff. We're doing amazing guys. Nearly at 1.4 K likes as well. Right, so once that's done, we're going to go ahead and create our endpoints. Okay, so the first one I'm going to create is an example. Uh, actually, no, before we do that, I need to actually create our sanity helper. Right, so I'll show you what I mean by that. But we essentially are going to create a file down here called sanity.ts. Okay, and this sanity.ts file, so make sure you've installed it just like I have. And we're going to go ahead and do the following. So we're going to, we need to import some helpers right here. Now, this is all available on the sanity docs online. Essentially, what we need to do now is create something called a config, right? So the config will look something like this. Okay, so it's a config. We have to say the data set, and we're going to show you how to set up your environment variables. And if we, we don't pass in the data set, it's going to use production by default. Okay, the project ID, I want to show you how to pass that in. And then again, the CDN. So if we're in the production environment, it will use the CDN, otherwise, it won't if it's a development environment. Okay, this is how we're going to connect to the Sunny ECMS platform that we just created. Okay. And then we need a helper function to go ahead and actually get the images as well. So this is actually going to be one of our helper functions. It's called URL4. And what it's essentially doing is it's using a sanity helper that they've created to turn the, the picture that we see on the sanity platform that I showed you previously. Um, so it was actually, uh, where was it? It was, da, 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 it was here. So any of these images that you guys can see, um, let's go ahead and check out, for example, like this one. If we go in here, so this picture, for example, how we can pull that and get a URL that we can then render on the screen. 
Okay, so in this case, this is gonna be a helper function. So first thing I want you to do is create this. Now we need to create something called environment variable. So our first thing I'm gonna do a dot env dot example. Now this is good practice. You should always have an example file. So that way when you commit it, you haven't got incorrect things. So the example here is actually next public sanity data set, next public sanity project ID, and next public base URL. Now they're all next public because we don't mind if these get shown, okay? The next thing I need you to do is I want you to go ahead and copy and paste this environment example, except this time we're going to go ahead and rename it to environment.local. And this is the one that we're going to be using. That's actually going to get picked up by our next year server. Okay. So at this point now, what I want you to do is we're going to go ahead and put in our first value inside of here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my um, example. I'm going to go ahead and pop in production. The, the project ID, I'll show you how to find that. Now for the uh, base URL, everything that we're trying to basically connect to is off of our existing local uh, C API. So it's actually our base URL is localhost 3000 at the moment. So we're gonna use HTTP localhost 3000 as our base URL for now. And the project ID is the next step. So how do we get the project ID? Well, click on login at Sani's website go ahead and log in to the account that you've set things up with and i'll show you how we find this now this is the one that we went ahead and connected uh, built just now i'm going to be using this one which is the pre-populated one that i built for us beforehand so as you can see if i click into it now you can see boosted free that means you successfully redeemed the coupon in the correct way now as you can see members it's, it's got me right here so I'm an admin and you can go ahead and add members, that kind of stuff. You've got the project ID and you've got your deployed studio. Remember the one that I showed you how to deploy. So here you can do access rows. You can go ahead and grant access rows, grant access keys, that kind of stuff. But as we're doing only read only today, we don't need to worry about that, right? I'm going to make a future video in a future build where we can do a lot more of those kind of things revolved around access rights. But in this case, we can go ahead and copy the project ID like so. So I can go ahead and hit save. And now we have it in the example. Oops, I've done it in the wrong one. This is actually in the wrong one. I can actually keep that stuff here, but this should have been the one I wanted to put in production. And then we're going to go ahead and say base URL. Uh, this one I'm going to have here. I went a bit nuts with the zoom now. I know, right? <laughs> um, okay, it's cool, cool stuff, right? So this is pretty good so far. So we've got that. The next thing you want to do is go to your node compiler running and it should say loaded environments. So that's new. They never used to do that. But I always, for safety, I just cut my server and I restart it to make sure that it pulls in my new environment variables. Now, these environment variables are going to differ. When we deploy this online, we're going to be able to basically go ahead and customize this. But I'm going to show you today how you can do it with the CLI tool as well, right? So let's go ahead and do the following. So now what I want to do is if I need to go ahead and access those variables, you say process dot environment, then next public. And the reason why you have this is because you might have a staging environment. You might have a deployment a development environment. You might have a production environment, all that kind of stuff. And they could be different in which case you might want to use different sanity studios or different sanity projects, one for your dummy account, one for your real account and so forth. Right. So all that kind of stuff is going to play into what, why you need to do that. So at this point we have Sanity's helper created. Now we need to go ahead and actually pull stuff in as we need to. So what we need to do is create our first URL endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one for the socials. Okay. So going over to hello.ts, I'm going to create a file here and I'm going to call this get socials.ts. And what we're essentially going to do here is I'm going to show you a bunch of different import, uh, endpoints that we're going to import, a bunch of different dependencies that we're going to import, right? So the typings we're going to create in just a second. Right. So you're going to need these as a helper functions. We're going to import Grok so that we can make Grok queries. We're going to import our Sanity client helper from our, the one that we just created. First step is we create our Grok query, right? So heading over to our um, sort of section over here, the first thing you want to do is you want to test out your query, right? So in this case, I just want to pull everything from social, right? So in this case, if I do this query, you can see that that gives me this result. Okay. So the first step I want to do here, guys, is I want to go ahead and actually just say const query, const query equals, and I'm going to go ahead and say grok and then back ticks. Okay. And then here I can just basically paste in this query, right? Cause I've tested it. I know it works and that's how I'm going to do it. 
okay so that looks pretty good now now the second thing i want to do is i'm going to create a type definition but i'm going to do that afterwards in just a second right so i'm going to actually go ahead and set up a next.js templated uh, endpoint so if you don't know how to do this simple way of doing it is you simply copy the one that they give you paste it in and change it up as you need right so the data is actually the type here so in this case we can say type data equals and we have to basically pass in a data value right so in this case um we're saying what should the response be structured as and essentially what we're going to do is re respond with a list of social elements so these are all going to be social types right so eventually we're going to have some kind of special type that we're going to write called social and it's going to be an array of that type okay then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say that we're going to have const socials so we're going to create a new object which is an array of social we're going to say equals await right so notice how this is going to be an asynchronous function so we have to add the word async right and also in the new javascript they've actually got rid of uh you can do top level away which is awesome right we're going to say sanity client dot and then we're going to say fetch the query so what this will essentially do is it'll go to our backend execute that query okay that we've got right here execute it and then it will get pulled back into this so this result will come back into here all right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to return this on the back end like so so this will return a 200 with the json inside of it will be socials okay so we're going to do this a bunch of times and i'm going to show you how we can create the type definitions and so forth so we're going to do the type definitions right now so we can get past that error so typings.d.ts allows us to create a type definition file um or our project so now one thing i want to mention is all of the sanity responses tend to have the following properties they will all tend to have something like this sanity body will, also, will always have something that created that id rev or updated that all right so i'm going to create a base sanity body interface and what we can do with interfaces are they're basically just inheritable types so in this case i'm going to create a new interface and call this one the image type and uh, we're just going to with that one afterwards. I'm going to create the first one, which is going to be social. Okay. So this one, we're going to say export interface. Uh, Richard B says, hey, something I learned from you is golden. You really are one of the best resources I've come across. Thank you for everything. So you truly are master maestro. Thank you, dude. I appreciate you so much. That means everything to me. Right. So we're going to say export interface social. And what we're doing is we're extending sanity body. So we're saying this is a type or an interface, uh, but it has all of this and it has extra stuff okay so then what i did is i looked through here and i thought okay what do we have different here so in this case here we have a type which is always going to be the value social and then we have a title which is string and a url which is string right so i've essentially done this for you for all of the following ones to come right now images inside of here will actually come in slightly different so if i change this to page info what you will see is page info comes back with a bunch of stuff now page info we actually only want the first value right so i only want the first value because it's only going to be one document inside there now notice how images come back in this weird format right so rather than showing that weird format every single time i've created a type definition to help you out right so i've gone ahead and i masked that one over here so we have the correct type definition now to save time what i'm going to do is i'm going to go through each different type and i'm going to go ahead and put it out onto the screen and show you how we're going to go ahead and do it so the first one is page info so page we've already done social then i'm going to do page info so you can see we've got page info type string and this is essentially just what i've done i've just mimicked it out and they all extend the sanity body right the next one i'm going to do is technology this is going to be like your experience that kind of stuff right the same thing very simple straightforward skill we're going to do as well okay so skill is going to be another one hit save we're going to do the same thing for project and project even references remember some of them were referencing other ones so in this case technology is actually going to refer be referenced here so you've got type technology array that's completely fine you can do that and then we've got experience which we haven't done yet so experience we haven't done yet so we're going to pop in experience over here so at this point you can feel free to pause the video as i was doing that and just basically copy out the type definitions but i just shown you uh how it savvy says seems lazy sunny is it no it's not lazy because i've i've done the hard work for you but it's already three hours in and we've still got a lot to do so i don't want to spend ages just doing things which are unnecessary instead i've shown you how to do one and then i've shown you how to basically go ahead and, and copy this out right so that's basically it right the, the main principle is that is that you just that's how you would find the types and go ahead and write them okay so We've done our first type definition so i can go ahead and import this in done so that's our first backend type done okay so what i'm going to mention now 
is I'm going to go ahead and do the following. So I've already done get socials. I'm going to do the same thing for all the different types now. So let's go ahead and do get skills as well, right? So get skills. I'm going to do the same thing, guys, because trust me, we have a lot to do, right? Get skills, get skills.ts, get skills.ts is going to be the next one. I copied and pasted it. And then I'm going to go ahead and change this up now accordingly, right? So for skill, we're doing the same query, but we're just changing this up. We're changing it to this. This is now going to be skill instead. And we're going to go ahead and change this to a skill array. And this is now going to be rather than socials, it's going to be skills. Simple as that, right? Very simple one-to-one -one swipe away from that. So, right. So we've done the same thing, but we just changed it to a skill query instead. We're going to copy this again. We're going to do the same thing for projects, right? Now for projects, remember we, I said we actually had, um, we done get, uh, projects. So I want to show you. So remember in projects, we actually had something a bit more interesting. So for projects, what we actually had was a situation where we have referenced fields, right? So it's projects, sorry. Right. So we had reference fields. So example, example is technology. This is a reference. Now, when you have references in sanity, what we can do is I can say, I want everything, but for the technologies, right? So technologies, what I can do is I can say, I want an array, but I want you to expand them. So that means expansion, right? And I can go ahead and say what fields I want, but if I want all of them, I just do that. And now if I click into technology, you'll see it's expanded the referenced type, right? So it will go ahead and get those information, that information as well. So project, that's how I've gone ahead and found that one as well. Okay. So for projects, what I've done is I've gone ahead and essentially copied that out as well. So we've got type project technologies expanding with an array type. Make sure you add that. If you don't add the array, it comes back. No, and you'll get super confused. Trust me. I happened to me. <laughs> All right. So at this point we're going to say projects is what get returned back. And rather than the skill type, we're going to change this to the project. All right. Amazing stuff. Get projects is done. We're going to do the same thing for get page info as well. So this one's going to be get page info, get page info like so. So here we're going to have get page info. I'm going to do the exact same thing. But remember I said for page info, what I did actually want to do was make it so they only got the first one, right? So in this case, we're going to only get the first thing back. And then what we're going to say is rather than projects, it's going to be page info, page info. And what I want you to do here is this, and this is not going to be, um, uh, it's going to be a single value back. So we need to change that accordingly. Okay. And this one's going to be page info type, which we just went ahead and created earlier. All right. So page info type done as well. The final one is get experience, right? So get experience is very similar to get projects where we had that referenced field. So in this case, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to say get experience, get experience. Yes, and here I'm going to go ahead and do the following. So where we have the same thing happening for project, we just do experience just like that. Right. And then here it's going to be plural. I'm going to have rather than projects, it's going to be experiences here. It's going to be experience instead of that type. So I'm just changing it here experience. And now you can see we have the same thing happening as we need it. So all of these endpoints now will go ahead and fetch the relevant information. So if you don't believe me, let me go ahead and show you right now. So if I go over to forward slash, let's just say get socials, hit enter, you will now see this is making a call to the back end and bam, I get my socials back. So I've created an API endpoint now. All right, so these are all working API endpoints. Guys, we're about to break 1.4K likes. Well, this end is strong. Right? I think we bloody might hit 2,000 at this rate with the way it's going. But yeah, the type is a return from the endpoint. Yes, exactly. So it allows us to type check. All right, so this is awesome. Really, really good stuff, right? You guys can see like LinkedIn, that kind of stuff coming in. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create helpful utility functions on the front end for each of those. And then we're going to use those utility functions to make our life easier on the front end. So heading over to package.json at that level, create a folder, uh, call it utils. Inside of that, I'm going to create something called fetch skills. I'm going to start with this one. It's going to be a TypeScript file. And the reason why I'm doing this is basically it's going to be a very easy way to go ahead and actually pull the information in. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to import the skill typing from skills, right? And this is going to be our front end call now. So the other one was the back end. This is going to be the front end, right? So we're going to say export const fetch skills, export const, sorry, oops, uh, const fetch skills. It's going to be an asynchronous function. So in this case, I need to say it's an asynchronous function. Okay. And here, what I need to do is make a call to my back end. All right. So in this case, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to make the following call. So const res equals await fetch. 
and I'm basically doing back ticks here. I'm passing in process.m.base URL forward slash API forward slash get skills. So basically what I showed you here is exactly what I'm doing. That's actually get socials example, but here it would have been no different. It would just be get skills like so. Okay. So that's basically what's going to come back. Okay. And then what we're going to basically say is the data is going to be await res, uh, res.json, right? So a very standard program in practice, right? If you, just find, if you find this confusing, join us over at Zero to Full Stack Hero. I teach all this stuff inside out, right? So at this point, we basically go ahead and render it out. We are type checking to make sure that we've got the correct type. And then what you can do, if you basically need to check at this point, you can put a console log there and just check to make sure that it's actually coming through. I would do that. That's why I was one of my debugging steps, right? Just to be honest with you, that's what I was doing to basically see if it was actually coming through or not. Cause I made a mistake one point where I wasn't fetching the correct way. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing now for each of them, fetch experience, fetch page info and all that kind of stuff. Right? So I'm going to do the same thing for fetch socials. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go ahead and copy paste. I'm going to change this to fetch socials, fetch socials. And now I'm going to change this to be the following, right? So basically at this point, I'm literally going to save us a bit of time. I've literally pasted this out and just to save us time, because it's the same thing I'm doing, but with different types and different response types. Okay. So very, very simple stuff that I'm doing now, same exact principle. So instead of doing it again and again, I'm going to create this fetch projects dot ts paste it in there you go the exact same there's no difference here guys i'm not changing things i'm just changing up that fact that it's a project as opposed from a skill and so forth okay so i'm changing the type definitions and i'm changing the url the same thing i'm going to do for page info okay so i'm going to go ahead and do that as well now give me two seconds i'm going to do this as well for page info so fetch page info fetch page info dot ts let's go ahead and do that as well right and then the final one is fetch experiences. So fetch experiences. So fetch experiences dot TS. Hit save. And I'm going to pop that in here as well. Like so. All right. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense as to why we're doing it that way. Um, but yeah, this is actually, uh, this is going to be really, really like a clean way of doing it. So this way, now we've got five utility functions, which are going to help us pull from our backend code. Okay. So that's going to help you out a lot when it comes to creating your clean code. Now, how do I actually pull this into the front end is the question. Well, let's go to index.ts dot tsx and here is where the magic happens so now we're about to do something called getting the static prop so the benefit of using next year is you can use different types of rendering for different pages on your website right isn't plural experience also experience i know did let's not get into it all right so at that point um what you can now do is you can render different pages in different types of ways so you can server side render per request you can have static pages which means that it's basically going to build it on the server build them out and basically have it waiting there. So every time somebody comes, it's just going to uh, basically send that page, which is already ready and rendered. Um, but the only difference with that is it, if I updated the information, it wouldn't be updated. So we're going to do something called ISR, which is the perfect middle ground, which basically says it's going to revalidate the page. So statically generated pages, it's going to revalidate every, however long we say, it could be 10 seconds. It could be a hundred seconds. It could be an hour, whatever we want to do. And after that, it will go ahead and rebuild the static page and basically prepare it on the server. So look into those things, uh, such as static page rendering on Next.js. If you're confused of what the hell I was talking about, but otherwise, if you want to know more we do cover that as well in zero to full stack hero okay so the way to get this working is basically you want to go ahead and, and they've got special functions that all you have to do is mention the word inside of the page so right now we're in the index page so we can use this and we're going to say const get static props okay now you want to make sure to use the special uh, appropriate type over here so we're going to use this template here called get static props and what you want to do is import this from next.js and props what we're actually going to do is go to the top of the page and we're going to start creating our first set of props now inside of here eventually we're going to have the following props being delivered to our page right so i'm going to import all of the different types and eventually we're going to have all of these be inside of our page so i'm going to go ahead and pull these in like so Okay. So in this case, you can see we've got all the different props coming in and then thank you so much Vetri for the donation. Appreciate you, man. Can you make a build using 3JS? I will definitely look into it. Thank you. 
right so at this point that looks pretty decent and um, we've got that kind of coming in but here we've got uh, a problem because we're not returning those props that i'm saying so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you an example of how i can fetch the page info so here i can say const page info of type page info equals a weight and i can go ahead and say fetch page info and just like that that line will get me the information from the back end all right now what i'm actually going to do is do that a few more times with those helper functions that i made earlier so i'm going to go ahead and import these as needed so i'm going to use my little shortcut there there we go now i've got all the data being prepared on the server beforehand all i need to do is return it to the web page in the form of props okay so i can say page info experiences skills projects and socials right now what's awesome is you see it stops complaining because we're passing over the props back in the props come through here in the form of props and what we could even do here at this point is destructure it so i'm just gonna get rid of that for now we don't need it right to make our life easier just in the case of the tutorial and we can actually destructure all of these things right here we can actually get all of our props out like so so projects skills and uh socials so i'm destructuring the props come through ju just like that now remember like i said so what this does is is when we deploy it will basically fetch that data at the, the way that i basically built it out so it will find that data fetch it build that page and then it will cache it okay so it won't rebuild it every time someone requests it it will cache it so at that point in time it's up to date but a minute later it's outdated right so what we can do here is rather than causing us to every time we change sanity i have to redeploy 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 i can now add something called a revalidate flag and the revalidate flag means uh, next.js is going to attempt to regenerate that page at the most every 10 seconds or every 100 seconds or something like that in between that gap it's going to keep sh sharing that cached page so that way it's got the perfect balance right so it won't ever be out of date by a certain amount of time so in this case i'm going to add in the following so i'm just doing this for demonstration i'm doing a revalidate of 10 seconds right which is quite extreme you probably want to have something a little bit more like kind of greater than that but this way they're never going to be revalidated past 10 seconds right if you want to do per request you change it to get server side rendering and it'll be per request it'll build out the the page so if you ever always want to be done but again that's going to be more intense it's going to take a little bit longer whereas if you cache it like this it's going to be faster okay so now we've got the appropriate information coming in so now we need to feed in feed through the page info and so forth right i'm gonna have a quick water break you're all right thank you ibrahim uh my god yo the viewers are crazy everyone's like there's still 300 people watching wow we are doing amazing guys this is where it gets really interesting because this is where i literally bring it in and all the everything ties together amazingly right it literally looks so cool at this point so now we're going to go ahead and do the following so i'm going to firstly start off with the header right so the header i'm going to pass through the socials so i'm going to prop down so i'm going to pass in the socials right so from that um server style statically rendered information i'm going to pass in header so our first thing we're going to have to do now is basically go ahead and prepare our header to accept those props so i need to say you're about to get a social array right so a social type array so that way we know what's coming through right and that will also tell us off if we do it wrong now right so now we can basically say yes we're going to get our socials through and we're type checking so we can't write incorrect code here when we're by accident if we if we correctly add this in right so it's really really good like that now here what we can do is we can go ahead and where we have the social icons and i'm going to have this on the side now because it's going to be awesome to see is i'm going to have my localhost 3000 on the side and we should be able to slowly start seeing things literally change as we have effects in place all right so right now we've got hard-coded values here of social icons instead of this now what i can do is because i made the type definitions before all that good stuff i can say socials.map and then i can go ahead and do the following i can basically go ahead and replace one of these with the following now remember every time you map through you want to give it a key right so what's a perfect key value here well remember each one had an id look at this we get the sanity body type definitions and we even get the social type definition so here i can do id as the key for the url let's think about it what could we do we could do social dot url we've got all the information there right so even as a developer it makes your life so much easier by doing this right we're literally a few likes away from 1.4k i'm about to lose my mind right as soon as i save this 
as soon as I save this, look, bam, look at that. That is now coming in from the back end. That is literally coming in from the port, uh, Sanity CMS back end, right? Which is incredible. So I want to prove to you this is actually working. So we go to social right now and I show you guys. Uh, let's just imagine I was to delete my uh, Twitter from here, right? So let's go ahead and remove the Twitter field. Um, uh, where's remove? Let's go ahead and delete. So I'm deleting the Twitter field. I'm deleting it and uh, it can still be recovered if I want to, but now I've not got Twitter there, right? So I wanted to update my portfolio. I thought maybe I shouldn't include my Twitter for whatever reason, right? So now if I refresh, it's gonna re-statically generate or revalidate after 10 seconds. And just like that, Twitter's gone. I mean, come on. Like that's so sick, right? And it works. And just like that, 1.4K likes smashed through the bag, guys. This is insane. Wow, we are going so, so nicely right now. Um, I, I'm, this is crazy. This is actually crazy. I'm so excited for this right now because this is nuts. We've not done it like this before, right? So this is really good. The header is now done. Let's go into our hero section, right? Let's move on to the hero section. So you see, once you've got the help of done, once you've done your TypeScript definitions done right, it makes it a hell of a lot easier to go ahead and do this very fast, right? So index, let's go ahead over here. Guado, what is up, dude? I see you. Let's go ahead and pass in page info now. So this one is going to be called page info. We are passing through the page info statically rendered prop, right? So all I do is I head into my hero. I go ahead, I pass in the page info. This is actually a singular object. It's not an array. Remember, we only wanted the first one coming back. And then what I can do now is I can go ahead and uh, pass, the, uh, basically pull that through as a prop. There you go, page info, cool. Now what I can do is I can use that information. And remember, for example, here where we had, hi, my name is Sunny, blah, 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 so forth, all that good stuff. I can now go ahead and do it before. And so here, if I change this to back ticks and I change this to a back tick, and I change this to something like, for example, page info. And I'm going to do optional chaining in, in the event that it wasn't there, right? Not in case it will be there, but it could be undefined on the back end, right? So I'm going to protect ourselves. I'm going to say name. Now, you can see, hi, my name is Sunny Sanga. Should still be working. Hi, my name's undefined. Okay, that's not correct because I forgot to save here. So now I've saved here and it should pass through. So in a second, we should see, hi, my name is Sunny Sanga, right? Um, so in just a second, you'll see that. And then afterwards, we can also get the hero image and so forth. So hi, my name's Sunny Sang. Yay, there we go, look at that, right? And then for the image, it comes back in a weird data type. Remember, so we created a helper function earlier in the Sanity helper. So we can go ahead and import our helper function. We pass in our page info, so page info dot image. So remember, we've got the hero image here. We've got the different pictures. So this one's gonna be the hero image. I am gonna protect ourselves. And then what we do is we simply type in URL, okay? Do that, and just like that, in just a second, we should still have the same image applied. Yep, so that's perfect. That's actually the same image that I had on mine, right? So you won't see a difference there because it's actually the same image, which is perfect. The same thing with the row, I've already done it. So in this case, look, one, two, three, I just wanna to prove to you that it's, that's a hard-coded value, right? So if I did one, two, three, okay? And then here, what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and say page info, dot row and you can see how look because we've done the type definitions beforehand it's so cool right like it works like look at that software engineer bam it comes through amazing right this is so nice like tabiro says morning sunny great content as always please keep this awesome work thank you dude for tuning in i appreciate you israel says you're so excited for me too hi sunny good evening what's up bro it's good to see you here uh yeah this is, i'm excited because it's genuinely cool stuff right this is actually really powerful stuff so i love it right you can use the count if you want to mess around with stuff i'm going to involve in that right now but yeah that's the hero done okay so hero is done let's go to the about section so you see what we're doing now right we're working our way through and it's doing pretty good right so at this point in the about section so over here now what i need you to do is pass in the uh page info right so same same principles page info goes through here we're going to go ahead and save and then here we're going to pass in page info and this is going to be page info like so okay page info comes through here page info and now we go through and we start replacing stuff so again the image right so here we have a hard-coded image value so what i can now do is the same thing i did previously i can go ahead and do url for import it as a helper function i can say page info uh image dot url and it's not actually the image oh the pop of fam anthem just came on that's sick all right can we get to 1.5k likes i swear to god this is so sick right Let's go ahead and do dot. And this one's not hero image. This one is profile pic. 
All right, so now it's ha it's, it hasn't broken, which means it's the correct one because my one was the same image. All right? Hey, let's go. And then we've got the here is a little background. I'm going to keep the same. That's a hard coded value, but you can again do the same thing. Modify your schema, change it up, and have it in. And then for all of this information, I'm going to do one, two, three to show you. And then I'm going to pull it from Sanity now. So page info. AC says not a fan of this music. What, dude? The Papa Farm music is sick for coding. All right, so in this case, we've got background information. Hit save. And look at that. Nice. So everything's looking pretty good. Headless team says, great video, Sonny. You like it? The Sunday show, I'm waiting with eagerness. I'm watching with a delay because of pausing, but my scroll snap speed is too fast. Any idea how to make it smoother? Um, the scroll snap's too fast at the moment. I'll make a separate video on smooth scrolling. But yeah, thank you, dude, for tuning in, man. So there you go. That pulls in as well. So really nice stuff. Really, really nice stuff, right? um people hyping up now i know dude it's crazy um so in this case that's looking pretty good so everything's looking good at this point so that's the about page done right so you've got the here's a little about so now if we update the background stuff it'll come through and then we've got the experience point uh, part now so here work experience so um one second let me go ahead and do this so we got the index so now work experience so this is where we're going to pass through our experiences so experiences equals experiences like so uh we need to go ahead and save the file it's going to freak out in a second this is going to be experiences of type experience i need to import our type definition that means experiences come through here cool and now rather than rendering these hard-coded values of experience cards what we can now do is we can pass in our actual experience ones right so now i can go ahead and i can do the following i could say experiences dot map for every single experience singular i want to go ahead and render out an experience card now remember every time you map you should have a key right so experience dot id and then here i'm still going to pass through the experience we're going to create another uh, prop that goes into it right so at this point savvy says some of your energy is incredible what we know about it sometimes on <laughs> um so this way we got id we got experience that kind of stuff uh hit save and then i'm going to go ahead and pass through the experience here as another prop so this is a singular experience that we pass through here there we go pass that through oops and then here save and now if i go down here we can actually start using these values to depict the pictures that you're seeing inside the experience card all right so i was rendering through them that kind of stuff so now if i go ahead and do this i can go ahead and say url4 and i can go ahead and say something like experience dot and then you can see i've got all of the uh, i've got everything that i need right company image dot url so it's just so nice that like we did it so correctly right so that's nice yeah you can spread as well yes you can if you want to yeah i just like to pass in the entire object for type checking purposes right now for this we've got the images popping up for like javascript 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 instead of that i can now do experience dot technologies dot map okay and i can say for every single technology i can go ahead and render out the following i can render out the image tag and the uh, attributes for that image tag are actually going to be the following. We've got the URL for, and now you can see, look, boom, it's coming in. It's coming in. Nice. Hey, look at that. <laughs> the started work and the ended, right? This one's a bit more interesting. What I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've said something like this. So I'm going to delete this out of the way. And now what I've done is I said new date, I'm passing in the initial value. So this is experience dot date started okay and then here i've done two date strings so two date strings so let's firstly show that and you'll see look wednesday december the 30th for blah 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 right so different dates and again they're dummy information i've not worked there okay i'm not claiming to have worked there just so I, no one freaks out and then what i'm doing is i'm saying experience and what i'm going to do is i'm going to check i'm going to say are you currently working there so it's currently working there and if you are working there, I'm going to say present. Otherwise, it's going to say date ended dot to date string. So in this case, I'm working at that place, the CEO, Papa Fam. And these ones are all previous dates, right? So again, that's dummy information. I don't want anyone to freak out, but that's how you know, right? We're nearly at 1.5K likes. Incredible stuff, guys. Absolutely nuts. The final one down here is the summary points, right? So in this case, 
rather than listing out these hard-coded values we can say experience.points.map for every single point i can literally render out a list item with the point inside of it right and again remember whenever we do this we should have a key and that key will be point dot uh, oh in this case we could just do okay the point is actually going to be it could be a case where you had two identical points so we're just going to use the index which is not the cleanest way but it's okay for this small list hit save and bam look at that guys nice now check that out now to fix that overflow issue if you ever do experience right so for example here so where it's a little bit big over the line kind of vibes right so in this case it doesn't matter too much because it still looks pretty clean but you can fix it by simply having a maximum height on that unordered list container right so you can have something like height uh 50 or something wait a second i'm just checking off the top of my head it's kind of difficult height yeah you could do something like this and then you can have it scrollable so you can have something like a overflow scroll i haven't prepped this one so overflow y um sorry um overflow y scroll there you go <laughs> nice and then you could have that as a scrollable container if you did have something longer right so you could do it that way just as an example guys i just want you to know you, all your options right so 96 i think is another good one yeah so we could do something like that right 96 and then you could go ahead and even customize it further so you can even do scroll bar uh thin there you go and then we could say scroll bar color scroll bar um track is black look at that oh i'm just freehanding this right now scroll bar um thumb could be something like thumb could be our papa fam color which is uh, i'm just gonna see if i've got it in my saved things so i'm gonna do something like this all right so thumb there we go all right so in that case you could do it that way so if you wanted to that's just an example right you could do something like that it's not got the x as well but you could also do overflow on both directions if you wanted um to have a scroll in that direction so you could have a height and you can have a width of like 96 or a max width of something like that so let's just say 56 so you could have 54 you got 42 um yeah this one i'm not going to get too far into but yeah you can go wild with this right and really change it up as you want um oh sorry i've done it as that 52 oh god okay that's horrible uh just need to do like four fits yeah so you can feel free to like change it up as you want right but the point is you can go ahead and mess around with all that stuff yourself i don't want to go and break loads of stuff uh because i'm live and it's a bit difficult on live stream all right, so there you go so that's how you would go ahead and fix it if it was to overflow right um okay cool and again if you want to do you can do max height right if you really wanted it so that way it won't break when it's big screen yeah so that's a nice way of doing it as well all right so max height and then it'll show that and i know there's a bit of padding issue there you can add a padding right if you really want to fix it it's very simple to do this kind of stuff so there you go padding right five there you go look at that very clean right so that was a live sort of uh, fix on the on that right so you saw me do it actually live okay so there you go and you got your skills popping in um that one's kind of strange i think it's just a bug right now yeah that's just a bug um now i did want to show um what's it goes here we got onto projects yeah that's cool awesome stuff okay so let's just carry on with the rest of the implementation so we've got the experience card rendering out so let's go back to index now we've got skills projects and contact me so skills and projects next so on index let's carry on strong so we've got skills i'm going to pass through so skills equals skills and that's going to be the prop that we've uh, statically page rendered save head over to skills and this is going to be a skills typing array this is going to be skill and here we've got a two clashing thing uh, we've got a clashing type so i can say as skill type i can rename it all right so that's how you would basically go ahead and do that right so now you've got the skills here so rather than doing all of this you can go ahead and have the uh a mapping function instead right so you can go ahead and say something like um skills dot map so skills dot map and then here I can say skill for every single skill. I want to render out a skill with the key being the skill dot ID. And I'm going to pass through the actual skill as a prop. Right. And then, yeah, that's what I'll do for now. So I could basically go ahead and do something like that. Hit save. 
Cool, and then we need to say that it's now accepting that prop. So this will be of type skill. So we can say, yep, a skill comes in and that's a singular. We go ahead and pull that through as a prop. So you see what I'm doing here, right? And then you can eventually use that skill in the creation of all of this stuff. So you can say you here, um, skill dot, and what is it? So you can see if you forget it, it's perfect because you have it there, dot URL, all right? So the skill comes through there and then the actual skill progress itself can be pulled in like so here. So we can have our percentage afterwards. And here you can say skill dot progress just like that. And bam, you have loads of different skills. That is awesome, right? That one's coming in late. I don't know why that's coming in late, but I'll, I'll show you a little trick now, right? So that's pretty damn cool, right? That was very, very nice how I did the skills one. Now I want to show you how we would go ahead and... Um, I love that. Someone goes, why doesn't he look tired? Honestly, it's crazy. I don't know. It's stamina, dude. That's all it is. Right, so here I've got a little trick I want to show you, right? So what if we want to go ahead and get the first half to animate one way and the other half to animate the other way, right? So I'm going to show you how we can do that. Michael, for the first time live, cheers from Czech Republic. What's up, dude? Good to see you in the house. Welcome to the Papa fam. Uh, yeah, man, good to see you. Almost at 1.5k likes, right? So um i'm actually going out after this can you believe that crazy <laughs> all right so um at this point we've got uh get first half of skills map so i want to go ahead and show you how we can half them have half of them coming in the left half of them animating in from the right right so we actually implemented this functionality earlier oops i've done that what the hell am i doing yeah we've actually implemented that earlier over here so remember direction left so what i need to do is pass it in but i need to basically say grab the first half and then grab the second half so how do we do this well, the first thing is I just copy it twice and I'll show you how we do it. Look, copy it twice and then we just need to slice and slice, right? So now I say slice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say the for the first half plus skills.length divided by two. So that will give me the first half, okay? And then the second one, I say slice. And here I'll do the opposite. I'll say skills.length, skills.length divided by two, right? Uh, all the way up until the ending. So skills.length. So basically I'm getting the last leg of them afterwards. Okay. And now what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to actually say direction left. Okay. So now if we refresh, you should see if I go to skills, let's go ahead and say skills. Oh, look at that. Look, it does half and half. And it always do it based on the length. So it'll get half and then it'll do the other half. Look at that, boom. So look, oh, so clean. It's so clean. Right, there you go. That looks awesome, right? So in that case, that's how you do it, right? That's how you do a little trick and you can kind of do that stuff. Repost is mind-blowing energy, amazing stuff. Uh, Pepita says map function, very useful. I haven't seen it in every project. Yes, I actually just dropped a whole series of function tutorials inside of zero to four stack hero. Map functions, filter functions, re uh, reduce functions, all of it is inside zero to four stack hero. It's amazing. Uh, I, okay, because I spent a lot of time on it. That's why it's amazing, right? So the next thing is we're going to go to index.tsx and now we're going to go to projects, right? So the final hurdle is nearly upon us, right? So um projects so this one here if we go to projects here we go to the say projects let's go ahead and go inside and now here what i do is i say projects is of type project Ooh. is of type oh god project and import it so remember it's an array because it's a, a number of them and then here we can get rid of our hard-coded one that we were using for testing thank you guys for loving that tip i appreciate it it's awesome stuff all right and then here we can say see it's it's undefined at the moment that's because we need to do a hard refresh right so you need to actually hard refresh that one and then here it says undefined so projects.map okay so this is interesting oh it's because i didn't save it that's not it's not that interesting all right there we go all right so hydration there we go forget that it refresh it was trying to hot reload there you go so here we had three things popping up and it hasn't got the incorrect the correct information so what do I do here? Firstly, I'm going to do our little trick to get the information in. So I say URL for, oops, URL for, oh, I love this song, project dot uh, image dot URL. And then we've got the case study one of some sort, yeah, and then the, the title here. So we'll have, we'll say project dot uh, title, oops, dot title, there we go. And even here, we can say something like um, project dot summary. 
And again, we'll protect ourselves. So now you can see we've got the different ones, a restaurant menu, Google clone, Google clone restaurant menu. Nice. They're coming in. Awesome stuff. And then we all, we, we just need to do the, um, the tech used bit, right? So I didn't do the tech used here. So what we actually forgot to do here was for the, um, I believe it's for, it was, where's my deployed one? Uh, let me have a look one second. Um, okay, there's another one. All right, so here, what we can now do is I, I do have tech used, I think, here, I believe. I didn't think I actually labeled it out. Okay, so I'll show you how to do it now. It's fine. All right, so where we have this right here, we can simply do the following, right? So you can actually go ahead and do um, project dot technologies dot map. So for every single technology, I'm doing this freehand, so it's fine. So we do image. Um, for every single one, we're going to have a key and it's going to be the technology dot uh, ID. And then for the source, it's going to be a safely accessing. And the reason why I can do this fast is because we've got TypeScript there. So it's actually very safe for doing this. TypeScript image dot URL. And just like that, pow, right? Class name is going to be height and width of 10. Okay. And that's actually too big. So let's do something like five. And what we'll do is we'll run us. Oh, no, that's, that's too small now. Oh, oops, what have I done? Okay. And what you can do here is I can wrap the entire thing in a div. Uh, go back here. And I can say that this is actually going to be 10. Uh, the div can be a flex box or flex item center to keep them aligned. And quite honestly, you could just can kind of keep going with it, right? So you could do that, justify them in the center. So it's bam. And just like that, guys, like what the hell, man? Like, that's crazy, isn't it? Like, look, look at that. Like, it shows all the, the things. I wasn't even on the, the, the deployed version. I was just there. So absolutely incredible. So now you can see your projects. You can see all your kind of stuff there. A uh, little glitch there. I'm not sure what's going on. Um, to be fair, that's just a weird timing glitch. It's only happening while I'm live. That's not actually in the actual code. Yeah, there you go. See? Um, but yeah, absolutely incredible stuff. And the contact form. All right? So quick little breakdown of what we've done so far. We've got Sanity ECMS powering this thing yeah let's go back to our actual front there we go we've got our social icons everything being pulled in now is effectively being pulled in from the back and look at the animation so slick all of this stuff's being pulled in from sanity cms the social icons the name the role we slide down we've got our background we've got the picture we've got the, the summary all this stuff again coming from the back end right being revalidated every single 10 seconds so if you were to go ahead and change it your ISR will kick in. After 10 seconds, it will pull that new information, cache that page. The next person who comes in will see that. So you're gonna get updated values, right? If you really wanna be anal about it, you can server side render, it's fine, right? Go down further. You've got the skills being pulled in. Again, all the different progress, like, you see that? Like React, what, I, what did Jay give me? Ah, oh, there you go, thank you, Jay. Give me 99 percent. <laughs> I don't even think I'm 99 percent, but thank you. Um, Give me 90 for next year. We, we trying to say, dude. All right. So at this point, uh, we've got the projects here. And then we can go ahead and scroll through. So you can see we've got all of this information, the different tech that we've used, all this kind of stuff. Juma Code says, please, are you going to upload this video on the channel? Yes, dude. As soon as I'm done, it's uploaded. It stays on the channel. Right. And then we go down further and we've got, I've got just what you need. Let's talk. Right. Very slick. Very kind of cool stuff. Right. For currency proficiency typo. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, current proficiency. Yeah. I type. Oh, currency. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to fix that. Um, skills. Skills. There you go. Someone's going to call me out on it, but Jay fixed it. He comes in clutch. See how sharp Jay is, right? He, he gets me on those things like current proficiency. There we go. All right. Saturday well spent. Thank you, Ibrahim. That's amazing stuff. Absolutely incredible. All right. So at this point, all we have left to do is deploy this bad boy and then we can go home and we can sleep. <laughs> right. No, I'm joking. Amazing stuff. Right. Some Cyrus or Nazarul says it's really live. Yes, it is live. All right. We're so close to 1.5K likes as well. You guys have been absolutely incredible today. Thank you so damn much, right, for you guys' participation. Uh, everything is mind-blowing, right? So at this point, what I need you to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy, right? So we're going to go ahead and you've already installed the Sanity CLI tools, I believe. No, we haven't done that. Okay, so Sanity CLI, 
you need to install the Sunny ECLI tools because we're going to go ahead and actually deploy with the Sunny ECLI, right? So in this case, you need to install Sunny ECLI tools over here. And I'm just going to check. Oh, sorry. No, we're, we're, my bad. We're deploying to Vassell now, right? We're deploying to Vassell. I'm getting ahead of myself, right? So what we need is we need Vassell CLI tools, right? So this is where we need it. So at this point, now what you need to do is run the following command to go ahead and actually install it into your machine. So I've already done this, installed it globally into uh, my machine so I can use the CLI tools like so, right? The second step is I'm gonna be deploying from, I've shown you in a bunch of builds how to deploy from uh, Versal in, in, like in loads of builds, I've showed you this, right? So what I would recommend is that now you just try the CLI approach. The reason why I'm gonna show you this as well is because we're actually gonna pull that data from our statically, uh, from our local running um api and then i'm going to show you how you can do it that way as well and yes you can deploy both and do it the normal vassell way on the ui but i'm going to show you this way as well right so i'm going to go ahead and check all right now so we've already done this we've already done this i'm going to deploy from the cli so first step we need to do guys is vassell build so i'm going to go ahead into my code and i'm going to go into this right here and i'm going to go into zsh second one i'm going to say the vassell build Right. And firstly, this is going to find the issue. So I'm going to say yes, enter, set up uh, document builds. Yes, enter. That's fine. Switch scope should contain Sunny Sanga. That's fine. Link to existing project. No, enter. Project name. That's fine. We could do that. Uh, enter. It's all in the home directory anyway, so it's fine. Okay. So I'm deploying everything at this point. Okay. So at this point, it's uploading my code and it's getting everything ready. And then it's going to say, well, do you want to modify these settings? And no, I do not. So enter. A lot of the default things here are actually what we care about, right? What we need. So it's going to go ahead and try and build out my production build now. So at this point, I will either get errors saying you've done something wrong in your TypeScript. You're not allowed to push this to production. In this case, we've got a missing key prop inside a project. So it's good. You see this. And we've also got an error in our pages. So let's go ahead and fix those errors. So TypeScript is calling us out on it, saying you're not allowed to do that. If I'm not allowed, you're not allowed. In this case, Sunny's portfolio. Um, here you can actually change this to page info um, dot name right so page, so sunny sanger portfolio something like that you could do and that's fine that one fixed that and then we could also do missing key props so projects so you got a, you're getting a live representation of actually how this would go down right so projects is uh, 24 let's go here to uh, key okay so I wasn't putting a key in here so that's right project dot id there you go awesome stuff let's do it again vassell build suddenly take a little water break and uh, thank you dude all right while that's building water break oh nice discord sync says i'm 15 junior front end developer two years experience thank you for your amazing video it inspires me a lot thank you dude They're amazing stuff keep it up look at that guys incredible stuff so it created the pages right so you can see here we've got all the api endpoints it created the pages and it statically with ISR rendered the page, okay? So this is good because the load time was actually quite long, which means that now it will be statically rendered, rendering that content, which means it'll be a lot faster, which is good, okay? So at this point now I need to deploy it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Versal Deploy Pre-Built. So the stuff that I just built, I'm gonna do Versal Deploy Pre-Built. And now this will actually go ahead and deploy it out and give us a URL back. So that way, and then you can go on the UI online, check it out, that kind of stuff, right? So at this point, let's go ahead and see for ourselves the deployed URL, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just check on something right now while this load in. So while that's happening, we are almost there, guys. We're almost at the end. We've been covering loads in this build today. We literally have had React, Next.js, loads of stuff different happening. Uh, Sanity, Frame of Motion, Tailwind CSS, tons and tons and tons of different things in today's build. React hooked form, Versal CLI, all that good stuff, right? So let's just wait for this to go down and do its thing and deploy. And then we can go ahead and see ourselves the final thing. So yeah, you guys can see right now for yourselves that this is actually an awesome way of doing it. Um, okay, inspect production, there you go. So I've got a production build there. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it on the screen in just a second. I don't wanna get in flooded and then DDoSed and then I have to, everything's going to crap, All right? So let's go ahead and load this up right now. Give me one second. 
Okay, guys, are you ready? In three, two, one, and we're about to break 500 likes. When we when we break 1.5k likes, I'll give a demo of a deployed app right now. So two likes away, two likes away. Literally, don't leave me hanging there. All right, don't leave me hanging there. One more like. Three, two, one. 1.5k likes. That's what I'm talking about. Check it out, guys. Bam. Look at that. Everything looking absolutely beautiful deployed working just fresh you know what i mean just absolutely fresh right really clean really slick everything's working and it was deployed from the cli right so everything was deployed from the cli in the way that we expected it and it's going to be using isr now as i mentioned if you want to do it the normal way you can definitely do that and if i would highly recommend that you would also go ahead and deploy your sanity studio that kind of stuff so that way when it does the isr all that kind of stuff oh no it would do that anyway from the, the urls but yeah as you would have to change your base url to your deployed url so that way it could be online doing that kind of recheck because when you close your local host eventually your isr won't be able to fetch from anywhere so heads up on that front but otherwise this has been one hell of a build guys it's been absolutely crazy oh my god like absolutely next level stuff this is crazy brian says the master needs some massage guys messages go take a rest please and continue honestly thank you so much for tuning in let's do a nice little run through again beautiful animations fully responsive build today pulling in from a sanity content platform absolutely incredible stuff using the grok querying language very similar to graphql it's dynamic it's updatable it's amazing the proficiency is spelled wrong it's it's four hours of genuine coding that's why right and then we have this awesome snap tool stuff that we haven't done in any build before we haven't used frame emotion on live before this is really something like i'm very proud of and i hope that you guys can benefit from on, on make your portfolios look beautiful as always guys this is the papa fam and this is only one way to end this out right there's only one way we're going to do this in the correct fashion first i just want to say a massive thank you as well to everyone tuned in today you guys are absolutely incredible still 300 people watching i don't know what to say i actually don't know what to say you guys blow me away right we're literally at 168,000 subscribers if you're watching the replay of this absolutely nuts we built a really amazing project the reason why i wanted to do this so bad is because i know a lot of you are trying to get jobs out there i know a lot of you are trying to push and this will help you just stand out a little bit amongst the rest of the other developers who are trying to do it as well so this should help you out for a little bit and get in that extra job interview extra sort of step towards that career that you're after and as always guys enjoy the free content on the channel if you want to join us at the papa fam head over to zero to full stack hero to jump into the community aspect of things but otherwise enjoy this stuff guys enjoy the process of coding and as always i love and appreciate every single one of you this is your boy papa react with the portfolio portfolio 2.0 thank you for tuning in crazy stuff yeah i'll see you in the next one peace Hey, I'm literally shaking. The, the energy is nuts. Enjoy, Papa Fam. Peace.